right, welcome to back to the Sizecast. Welcome to and back to the Sizecast. Episode 50, special, special, special guest in the house. Before I introduce our new friend, if you're if you're a new subscriber, all right, Natalia, let them know what they got to do. Guys, make sure you like this video, subscribe, share this video, but make sure you like it and give us some good comments. We, we, we need to show some yeah, love show to Richard Hart. If you're a fan, yes, show some love. It's our 50th, 50th episode. 50th episode. So we do this, this out here at Valuetainment. So if you're not familiar with us, what we do here at Valuetainment, this is the Sazcast. My name is Adam Sosnick. You can call me Saz. I'm with here my co-hostess Natalia Richard Hart in the house. Let me give this. Let me edify this gentleman before we do Sazcast, so you understand. Richard uh, dripped out. By the way, we're gonna address all of that. Sazcast is where finance meets romance, and where money and relationships intersect. So that's what we got going on over here. All, only on Valuetainment, the number one channel in the world for entrepreneurs. So you're an entrepreneur, I assume. Yes, sir. Big time. Multiple. So um, our whole goal here is to help men improve, whether that's in the marketplace, whether that's in the sexual marketplace, and then just win in life. We want to get you paid, laid, and do it your way. That's what we say here on the Southcast on Valuetainment. With that being said, let me introduce our guest here. A lot of people were hitting me up last week. Bro, Richard Hart's in town. You got to get this guy. Bro, bro, he wants to go. Where, where'd you at? I'm like, I've heard of him. I don't know much about this guy. I got people that I haven't talked to in years. Bro, I heard Richard. I heard he wants to go. He's in town. I'm like, all right, who the is this guy <laughs> okay so richard hart infamous right yeah. controversial yeah he's out there Shouldn't you love be. him you hate him you don't know what to make of this guy the founder of hex cryptocurrency correct and crypt and hex is the world's first high interest blockchain certificate of deposit a cd yep. for those of us that are in the money game that understand this so richard so, Welcome to the Sazcast. Thank you, bro. I love this. This is in a vault. I love it. It's in a bank vault. This is an old I, bank. I, I, I have been in this actual bank when it was an actual bank. Really? Yeah, I think this was like a first national bank like Many 20 years ago. ago. Mm -hmm. 20 so years we're ago. here in Fort Lauderdale. Are we allowed <clears throat> to disclose this location? Because I know that you kind of keep things. I, you know what? I'm when not going to say the address, When I'm on bro. vacation, yeah. I'm flexing hard. I'm going okay. out everywhere. I'm posting where I'm at. Everyone wants to meet up, say hi. Gotcha. Yeah. But in normal, in normal day to day life, nobody knows where I live. Got it. Good so, idea. but you grew up. <clears throat> I grew up around here. Yeah. Exactly. <clears throat> Ten minutes away from here. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Stay Road Davie 84. Davie area. Stay Road 84 on 95 Southeast Corner next yeah. to the airport. Stay Road 84, Marina Mile. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Yeah, I know it well. And I think we're around the same age. You were in your early 40s? 42. 42. Okay. So I'm one year below you. I went to Nova High School. So elementary. Nova Public or private? Because you know that U school, that's the private school. I'm all public, bro. Public, Nova. I went all my, all my kindergarten, one, two, three, four, five, all black. Yeah. R Riverland Elementary. Broward Boulevard, just west of 95. Okay. Near 441, kind of. Dude, that's 10 minutes away from here. Yeah. You know. Yeah. You know what's going on here. So um, before we kick off, we're going to talk a lot of good, good, bad, ugly, everything that's going on in the world, your life, crypto, business, finance, everything. Um, again, this is where finance meets romance. So we ask everybody this initial question just okay. to kind of set the table. Um, Isn't where finance meet romance called prostitution? I don't know. Hey, maybe it is, brother. I don't know. I think you got to pay for that. Not when you save you got to pay for that. You got to pay for that, Richard. So let's just start off with this. Let's get your relationship status. Oh. And then how you make your money these days. I um my relationship status is running up my high score. I want to go to four digit. You know. You're running up your body count. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, I'm also I I don't. I mean, I just you want to brag about all the money stuff. I want quick? you to brag. Okay, Richard, We're, listen. Which, let's which just get off top. Hold on. Do not be humble, bro. Hold on. Which so TV? you're dripped out with. I don't know what's going on here, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Do which not TV? be humble. Which TV? Which TV am I looking at? Which screen? Go straight right this there. Right That's here? you. On the what's left. Up, yes, hey, go. I see you over there. Okay. Hi, Richard Hart. I own the world's largest diamond. You do not, okay? I don't care what you do. I don't care how hard you work. You can't own the world's diamond, the largest diamond. I own it. Me. You don't, okay? Get that right, right now. Second, I raised $27 million for charity. You ain't raised $27 million for charity, but you probably think you're a better person than me. Lol, you ain't. I'm the free self-help author that wrote two books that you can download for free, t.me slash S-C-I-V-I-V-E. But since I don't charge for them, people don't read them, so I'm going to have to start charging for them <laughs> so you all actually read them. I designed a cryptocurrency, went up in price 10,000 fold in 623 days. That's 10,000 X. That's a million percent. Perfect, flawless operation for 1,000 days. And if you staked it, you made more. You could have made, you know, 50% more. You could have made like 1.5 million percent. I'm just getting started, man. I got $10 million of wristwatches, and I'm in profit on them. So I made money flexing. Who's making money flexing? All y'all people wasting money in the club? You ain't making money on that. I flex and make money at the same time. Genius. 
I got $3 million in cars. I got the 1,000 horsepower Ferrari. I had the most expensive Rolex has ever made. And, and I'm doing the world's largest free airdrop. So if you got coins on Ethereum or uh, you know Ethereum itself, you're going to get a copy of that free on a new network. You only got to do nothing. No sign up, no ML, no KYC, no nothing. It just works. You go play with your coins in a test net right now. It's been working great for eight months. Pulsechain.com. There it was. Richard, lot to unpack right there. We're going to cover all that fun stuff. So were you always this humble? Man, I was, <laughs> Meaning, I was always... Like, did you always have swag? Were you always confident? Did you always say, like, I'm going to take over the world mentality? Yes. Or did you kind of have to grow into that? I always had that. But, really? But that don't mean you do good with girls. That's a different skill. With girls? Yeah, it's a different Explain skill. the difference. A lot of guys, they're good at sales, good at dude stuff, good mm -hmm. at whatever. But then when it comes to the chicks, they're just... In. The chicks don't like them. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. There's a different magic, a different... Has has your game or uh, your the way that you, you know, Mac Daddy style changed, totally changed since you've had money? I didn't used to know nothing about fashion. I okay. used to look stupid. When I was growing up, when I was in high school, I wear a Led Zeppelin t-shirt every day. That don't work, bro. Yeah. If you're wearing a Led Zeppelin t-shirt every day, you ain't getting no dates. So. Unless you're into the rock stuff. Yeah, I guess. But in, my, in Miami, Fort Lauderdale, nobody That is. wasn't the vibe like, right there. Over. Yeah. So, by the way... I, this, this is what I expected because we've been uh, Carlos. We have his. We have Richard's Instagram up there, right there. By the way, we're going to be answering all your questions. Natalia, let the people know in the chat what we're going to be doing today. Yes, we're going to be answering all your super chats, all your questions. So make sure you give us some good questions, good super chats. We'll start um, with some bigger ones and then we'll end with the smaller ones. But make sure you guys stay till the end because we've got a lot of juicy stuff. Yeah, Richard, gonna are you gonna, are you okay with answering questions from the you chat? Y'all could do. Hey, man. We can do whatever we want with Richard okay. today. My chat's you. nasty. So my chat is like asked every mean, evil question possible already. So You're I'm good ready. with that. I'm ready for your little. By the way, chat, it's not right? just crypto stuff. <laughs> it's not money. It's dating, relationships, yeah, flexing, balling, no all that stuff. No filter today. Zero no filter, filter yes. here on the Sawscast with Richard Hart. Cool. Yes, Let's take a look, just because again, the drip speaks for itself. Let's see what we're going on here, Carlos. I know that you've been sort of monitoring his Instagram. Let's start with the athleticism first. There we go. That's an athlete, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. That's an athlete, ladies that and gentlemen. That is a hard move. I By the think. way, the fact that you're just up on the pole balancing, respect. The leg split. So are you an athlete? No, dude. I just have a pole in my house, and a lot of girls come over and show me tricks. So got it. I know like two good tricks. I'm gonna learn more probably. Mm. It's just it's fun, you know. You want to party? Yeah. Because some women stuff. out there actually take pole dancing classes who are workout. not strippers. That's Real a, you've done that's something like that before? I've never done anything, but I'm not opposed to it. Uh -huh. Open-mindedness. Here's Richard. the problem with that, man. Yeah. People don't realize it. It hurts your legs a lot. It's very intense. Yeah. You're going to cut up your legs. I thought you said you didn't know about no, this. No, but have you seen a woman like do tricks and go like... Yeah, I've, I've been very... to a fair share of strip clubs. <laughs> I, yes. I would assume I, you yes. would know. I'm familiar with this <laughs> mentality. Got it. Okay. Moving on. Athleticism. Check. Let's go to something balling out in the, in the store. How about mm. that? What you got? Yeah, I walk us through this, Richard. So, like, you can get better selection of luxury goods here in mm -hmm. Miami than you can get where they're manufactured. So, if you go shopping in Italy or France, the selection is trash compared mm -hmm. to Bal Harbor. Well, this is the design district yeah. in Miami. I'm very yeah, familiar yeah. with this. I live yeah. five minutes away from there. So, what'd you buy? Oh, this was like a couple track suits, a jacket, a, a set. Like I was missing the pants for a set, mm -hmm. like a tracksuit set. I was able to find those there. Nice. Um, so I actually had some hexagon shaped notepads at mm -hmm. Gucci. I was like, mm -hmm. I got some of those. Mm -hmm. And then at Prada, oh man, Prada. Okay, I love crystal stuff. So like this here is a Giuseppe. I don't remember his last name. Giuseppe something Zanotti. Mm -hmm. They're crystal, but see with the shoes. Yeah, with colored, and they have spikes, spikes and crystals. So this like spikes is like Valentina Louboutin, and crystals kind of like everybody's getting on that game mm -hmm. now. So I've got Alexander McQueen crystal. I've got Louis Vuitton crystal. I got Prada crystal. The Prada ones are the best. Prada ones are the best price point. So the Louis Vuitton ones were five thousand five hundred fifty dollars, and the uh, the Prada ones is only like here. They would be maybe eighteen hundred dollars, mm -hmm. but the crystals sparkle harder. They're more durable. They're more reliable. But here's the problem: these stores, when they get them, they hide them because it's like the unique, special, hard to get stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, if you're on a website trying to get it, they're just sold out. You can't get them. Like you got to roll up. Uh, in Europe, I literally couldn't get my size. I wear a size uh, twelve, like a forty-six, and then <clears throat> depends on the shoe. Like the is small, like 46, 47, 48. So I had to call my. I had to like order it to my mom's house. Because they had it in America, right? Mm -hmm. So I was able to get one size 12. 
but then it took me like a year to get here to like get it. Mm. But then I went to the I went to the design district and they're like, yo, we got them hidden in the back. I'm like, oh my god, give me all of them that you can give me. They're like, we've only got one of each size. I'm like, okay, fine, give me. So I got a black crystal set, white crystal set. They were hidden in the back. You couldn't get them online. They were sold out. So it just bothers me. Like Prada is an Italian brand, and mm-hmm. when I'm in Europe, I'm getting better Prada select. And I even have a rep. Like I spend a lot of money. I have like an assigned. Yeah, when 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 the <laughs> salesperson at Gucci, Prada, Louis, all that yeah. sees Richard Hart walk yeah. in, they're like. I just made my commission for the fucking yep. day. Yeah. Louis Vuitton flies me to Paris for Fashion Week, puts me yeah. in a hotel. That hotel is like two thousand a night, like mm-hmm. easy, and tries to sell me stuff. So like one hundred and fifty five thousand dollar. Well, here it would probably be two hundred and twenty five thousand dollar, you know, case to put your shoes. in. Most expensive piece of clothing you've ever bought. I you know I, I the mean, diamond. I believe you could, not jewelry. Mm-hmm. The, I think the diamond I, costs a little over four million bucks, from what I understand. Yeah, but you know it's worth more than that. Mm-hmm. that I got a Appreci- good deal on. You that got a too. good deal. I I, I I was tactical with that. I okay. Can't, I'm like, yo, this is for hexagon cultural heritage. The maximum stake you can do in hex is five thousand five hundred fifty five days. So we have a lot of people that do that and get quattro cinco like four or fives tattooed. Mm-hmm. And then four thousand the maximum yeah, stake. Yeah, five 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 five. Yeah. Okay. And, then this and that's diamond, how many years is that? About fifteen. So that people are willing to wait fifteen years for their. Total return. Average stake length of hex is seven years. Okay. Mm-hmm. You got to have a lot of 15-year stakes to get an average of right, seven. Right, right, It's really mind-blowing. Of course. I mean, it has never been, and it keeps getting longer. I can tell you why it keeps getting longer. It, it's The system is amazing. Like People don't understand how high the price can go. We went up 10,000x on just 100,000 stakers. We just recently put on 5,000 in the last, I don't know, couple of weeks. That's not many people. Mm-hmm. I mean, every stupid thing out there has more, like, we're What's ju- the we're minimum pre-viral. stake? Nothing. There's no minimum. No minimum stake. One one hundred millionth of a hex. Hex gotcha. is like six cents. Gotcha. So a hundred millionth of six cents. <laughs> I gotta give a shout out because I never heard of hex. To yeah. be frank, um, yeah. that's why until it's potential. Jory, your you know Jorita, Jorita. Yeah, Jory? yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, she's probably watching this freaking out right now. Yeah. Jory, respect. Um, she is cool. She's yeah. like she she's hooked up with a hexagon now. A hexagon, bro. I think so. No. So anyway, the most expensive piece of clothing. Yeah. So like, I mean. Clothing. Does a does a million dollar Bulgari jewelry count? No, not clothing. Um, it's considered clothing, but not really. I would say like probably my Prada jackets are like eight grand each. Like the sequin Prada jackets Got are it. eight grand. What was the switch? Because you said you weren't into style. So like, what was it? Just like you made money, and you're like, I like clothes now. Like, what was it? That- just, so basically, when you want to, you master something, you get into it, mm-hmm. and then you max it out, and then you get your end game, and you're done. So like mm-hmm. watches, I own them all. Like I'm done. There's well, what was like left. your first piece? You were like, I want to start buying shoes first or watches. Like, what was your? I how mean, did you do your investment pieces? Like, so to dress all Louis Vuitton. Vuitton. I want something that speaks at a distance. Mm-hmm. So if you get like Ferragamo, Gucci, Prada, and it's just black with a logo on it, mm-hmm. no one can tell what that is. Mm-hmm. It could be Zara. It could be anything. Right. So if you want something that shows I spent too much on this, therefore you should like me more, mm-hmm. then it's got to be. Either very colorful mm-hmm. with a known monogram or monogram print, or for instance, Bottega Veneta Green, mm-hmm. they own that color pretty yeah. much. Louis Vuitton Brown, they own that right. color pretty much. Right, right. And then, you know, it, it when I punch with monogram or very specific color, it, it punches at like 30, 40 yards. Mm-hmm. And so you don't have to be on top of me to see to it. See it. Right. Yeah. So like these DG glasses, these are mm-hmm. obviously DG glasses. Right. You're going to see these from maximum possible distance. So it's like marketing. Distance. You're finding the best items to kind of market yes. the products and then from there. Of the Instagram. And they have durable open. value as well. So mm-hmm. on my Louis stuff, like I, I have a Louis Vuitton airplane bag that was 40000 bucks. Mm-hmm. I ain't going to lose money on that. Mm-hmm. There's only a couple in the world. Like yeah. I'm going to make money on that. Right, right. When, Natalia, when you see a good looking gentleman like this, mm-hmm. dressed like this, turn on or like you're trying too hard, bro? Be um, real here, Richard. Can we be real? That's a try too hard. I would say. That's a very long inhale. Yeah. That's a try too hard. I think it's, um, I, when you first see it, you're, my first assumption is like you're trying to make a statement. You're mm-hmm. trying to be attention. So, I mean, it, then at that point, it's a matter of like when you're approached, kind mm-hmm. of what attention you want to give to that person, you know? I like to give everybody kind of like a fair way to meet. You're not going to judge a book Yeah, like if, if I see someone dressed, I'm like, all right, well, they're flashy, so they must be in business doing something, right? So then my mind is like, so what, how do they have this... Idea. Crypto yeah. or drug dealers? Right. What you're it's thinking. Like, I'm not sure. Which one is it? But it's not like one's I, going to the moon, one's going to jail. Yeah. Who knows? I will They're not say, mutually exclusive. I will say, <laughs> They're not mutually exclusive. Yeah. Ross Ulbricht was kind of in both. Like, got it. 
I will say though, you today I feel like you find a lot more people trying to like dress the part and they're not really that part. So there mm. is that sense of like maybe fake it's it just you fake. Make it. But then when you if you take time to get to know the person, you determine at that factor like, oh, they're legit. Like they're really mm -hmm. entrepreneurs and ex you know. how much money did you have to be worth when you're like when you start saying, All right, gonna buy a diamond. That's four million bucks. All right, I'm just gonna buy a bunch of shoes that are all a couple thousand bucks each. All right, yeah. cool. Uh, Eight thousand dollar Louis jacket. Right. Boom, boom, boom. All good. Mm -hmm. That's, was was there a certain like when I hit X amount of net mm -hmm. worth, then I'm gonna start balling out. I, I think if you buy any of this stuff, you're retarded. <laughs> like seriously, mm -hmm. if you buy any of this, yeah, because like you're think retarded. About it. Think about it. You got a ninety. So you're, mo you're almost mocking people. Well, it's just okay. I've been retired since two thousand and three. Mm -hmm. That's twenty years. Yeah, you've been. Re so I've been retired means, twenty years. So, and when you retired, you were twenty. I started traveling the world. Twenty five. I was twenty five. You're, yeah, you're twenty five years old. Yep, one hundred fifty okay. employees down in Dania. And you had what was your net worth at that point? Uh, I don't want to say, but millions, like gotcha. like you know, low low digit double millions or whatever. Okay, but like, so the issue is, you. <laughs> If you don't buy a 90 or 95% dip in crypto, everything that you bought instead, when it bounces back up to its previous highs, now costs you 20, 10 to 20 times more. Mm -hmm. And so, like, if you buy a Rolex for 20 grand instead of buying the dip, when it bounces back up in a year and it starts making new all time highs, that Rolex costs you 200 or 400 grand. That's how the real math works. Yeah. Like, because like, the alternative was buying the dip right. on whatever. Yeah. It and might now have you been. could buy 10 times as much stuff. Instead of one X, the stuff. Yeah, if you so, sell, though. Well, of course, yeah. Yeah. But so, like, if you, well, in Hex, you don't have to sell. You can sell your interest if you want. It generates yield. So, gotcha. You know, people are making on average 37% APY. Gotcha. Almost like dividends. Yeah, kind of. I mean, so, like, it's, it's weird because it's nothing like a CD because CDs don't pay anything and mm -hmm. there's all counterparty risk. They can just not pay you if they want. But in this, there's no counterparty risk. You mint your own coins, you mint your own rewards. And when I say the returns are thirty seven percent, it's kind of like a joke. It's really like thirty seven million percent. Like mm -hmm. or, or, or like it's it one one point three seven million. So if you made a million percent on the USD appreciation and then you made an extra thirty seven percent on top of that, that's one point three seven million. It's like one million three hundred seventy thousand. Now this is if you bought the bottom of sold top, which is very rare. Not everyone does that. Some mm -hmm. people do, but you know, maybe you're like these numbers are insane. But how like, do you know where the bottom you, is and where the top is? Because, you know, well, the Warren Buffetts of the world or the great investors of all time will say, just stay for the long game. You never, you can't time the market. It's not I, about timing the market. It's about time yeah. in the market. Don't day trade, decade trade. So how do you figure that out? He's not in the same market I'm in. And if he was in this market, I'd smoke him. In, in, in his market, he smoked me. Well, it's so it's fucking like Warren this. Buffett, dude. <laughs> well, well, here's the thing, right? Warren Buffett's tactics are to buy something and never sell it, which mm -hmm. gives you a tax advantage. So if you're, if you're taxed at the corporate rate, I don't remember exactly what it is, but let's say it's 20%. Mm -hmm. And the uh, return on investment in stocks is, say, let's average 10%. You're making an extra 2% a year by never selling because you, you, you have extra money in the market because you weren't taxed because you mm -hmm. didn't sell. And so if you buy a thing like Coca-Cola that tends to have product market fit, a walled garden... It's, it's not a volatile industry. It's likely to be popular for a very long time. So he buys Gillette. He buys Coca-Cola. He buys things that have... McDonald's, Apple. Boring. Kind of thing. Exactly. He's a traditional. The, the Apple thing's new. If there's that anyone that's the exact opposite of Warren Buffett, I think it would be Richard Hart. True. Yeah. In terms of But Apple wasn't even was. his idea. It was someone else at his company. That Correct. He, you know, he has to, Either was Coca-Cola or McDonald's. Die. He's going to die, and then he has to hand it off to the next guy, yeah. so the next guy might as well get experience. So it, the issue is, like, why do I care about Warren Buffett or the stock market when it only did a 2x in 14 years. Mm -hmm. You had to wait 14 years to get a 2x in the S&P 500. And this is with all-time high inflation, with 0% interest rates, with money printing at the yin-yang. You couldn't have had a better macro environment for stocks to appreciate. And so the S&P 500 in this environment where, you know, if you adjust for inflation, it's not even that good. Like if you adjust for inflation, you didn't get a 2x. And so why would I care about 14 years wait for a 2x when I can get that in a month in crypto. Like Hex just went up 2x in the last month. So do you want to wait 14 years or do you want to wait 30 days? It's really that easy. And I don't, and like all this other stuff, I don't care. I don't care. Like it's but real. It, like, how long, how, screw the how long ago did up. you start Hex? Uh, a thousand days ago. A thousand days ago. Yeah. So three years ago. Yeah. Give or take. Yeah. Two point two. Prior to yeah. Hex, where were you putting your money? 
Well, I never talk about my money, but I can say that you know I mined Bitcoin at fifty cents. Um, mm -hmm. I bought Bitcoin at thirty. It went directly down to two. So that drop that was a ninety three point five percent drop instantly. You that held. was my yeah. But this I wish I bought this more. This was in two thousand ten. I wish I'd bought the dip. Imagine if yeah, I bought the dip. That'd be much nicer, yeah. right? Like you can, if you just two x your investment on a ninety percent dip, you ten x your stack. Mm -hmm. So you're like. But even before Bitcoin, you must have had. Oh, like yeah. If you said you were like, worth x amount of millions, you weren't just keeping it in cash. You, you had real estate, stocks, never, bonds, I'm right? Never gonna answer it. I didn't ever talk about my finances. It's all downside for me. Like it's all risk. Talking about your finances? Yeah, like what I have and where I've had it. And I'm talking about twenty years ago when you retired. I do. I got okay. Let me put it this way. I yeah. went to Panama. I got the shit robbed out of me. Mm. So. I went to Panama, so I retired, I moved to Panama, mm -hmm. I got a penthouse and, you know, an office, a bunch of cars and all that stuff. And then uh, I got the crap robbed out of me. Like everyone was working an angle on me. And so like there was physically like a, robbed or they robbed your oh, house? No, I, all that. Was it the people you Everything. knew? I'll tell you. It? I'll tell you the whole In story. In Panama, oh, okay. Yeah. So if you move to the third world and you're a gringo, you are going to be victimized. Mm -hmm. And in Panama, there's two newspapers. There's La Prensa, which is what the tourists read. And there's La Critica, which is what the people read. Mm -hmm. And the dead bodies are shown in La Critica. And in the Villa Prensa, there's no dead bodies. Mm -hmm. So there's two different Panamas based on what news you're reading. It's called marketing. I guess. <laughs> and so, like, <clears throat> this dude in that country, and they don't even have this anymore. Like, they got rid of bearer shares globally. But they used to people just own their houses with bearer shares. And if you want to sell the house, you don't got to go through a bunch of paperwork. Bearer just, shares? What is that? Bearer shares. If you bear the share, if you hold okay, the share. You. It's mm -hmm. like if you, if you hold a dollar bill, it's your dollar bill. So... Bearer instruments, things that change ownership based on who possesses them, they've basically been eliminated globally, hmm. probably for the reasons that, like, what happened to me. Probably. Hmm. So <clears throat> they used to have bearer shares. Now they don't. I don't think they do. I haven't been there in decades. I'm never going back. I don't like that place. Yeah. Hmm. So what was the lesson that you learned there? You're basically saying well, that you retired, dude, you had a ton of cash, ton of this assets, dude, and they just... He had a fake shareholder meeting yeah. where they said the shares are present. They were not. I had the real shares. They changed the ownership of the company. They changed the name of the company, directors, the ownership, which basically stole all the stuff the company's owned, right? Which is the properties and everything. So I had my house stolen, which was funny. Mm. And then, other, and then, like while I was gone, like my girl went back to like get some paperwork, and then did a home invasion. Ten people, broad daylight. It's in the newspaper. You can go check it out. And then, while you were in the home, no, my girl was in the home. Mm. So they they tied her up, made her open up a safe, but there was nothing in the safe. Just got some Swarovski crystal. Retarded. Mm -hmm. um, but not fun to have 10 people knock like I had a security guard no. just from my house extra on top of the building security they knocked him out didn't kill him just knocked him out and uh, like 10 dudes 10 like when in Florida do you get 10 dudes gonna run up in a house at once mm -hmm. that's crazy like that's a lot of dudes mm -hmm. so <clears throat> they must have known you, you were you had that money. well yeah, I exactly. think I think so it turns out the guy that huh, the lawyer that I gave the real shares to mm -hmm. to cancel out what they did he used them to cancel out what he did. He got that house back. Guess what he did with it? What did he do? He gave them to himself. Hmm. The lawyer that I gave the shares to stole the house from the guys that originally stole it and kept it himself. And so I did some research on this lawyer. Turns out he became a lawyer in prison, which you can't even do in America. <laughs> but uh, in Panama, you can. So this guy was the leader of a Robo Rolex gang where they would rob people with Rolexes. And he did time for it, like five years, 10 years, can't remember which. And then he jacked me for my stuff. And uh, I'm just like, man, is there anyone not crooked here? Mm -hmm. Like, this is insane. So I got robbed by the criminals once. Then the home invasion, who may have been tied to that dude, because he knew a lot of dirty people, you know. And they, and they even killed witnesses, too. Like, so, like, one, my dude, that, I was so tired of being betrayed that I figured, all right, well, I'll hire, like, somebody that's unlikely to screw me. So one of the applicants for the job was, like, a male nurse. I'm like, oh, that guy's probably not going to screw me. Merce. Yeah, he takes care of people for a living. He's probably not going to screw me. Well, he screwed me. And so we got we got a arrest warrant for that dude, and we were going to get him to roll on the other dudes. So the day before the arrest warrant served, shot in the neck, dead. You're like, oh, okay. That's what's up. So how long did you, did you get the hell out of Panama I after this story? The hell out of there, okay, dude. so what's the lesson in all that story? Cause don't go to the third world. If, like, when all your friends tell you, like, don't go down there, it's dangerous. And you're like, no, but I Googled it, and it's like, we're fine. Good. And then you're like, oh, wait, uh, it's not fine. Mm -hmm. It's, it, it's all fun and games till it's not. This stemmed from the question <laughs> when I said, where did you put your money pre-crypto? And you said, yeah. listen, I don't want to talk about money. I don't want to talk about that. Like, my... it's all you said, sucky. I don't want people to know what's going on. Well, this is like all bad. Like, if It's not when you're trying to be like Mr. Badass, own mm -hmm. the world kind of stuff, like talking about getting wrecked and like, you know, having it go wrong. It's not 
high value. You know what I mean? You're not demonstrating higher value talking about how you got annihilated somewhere, mm-hmm. right? But you know how they say <clears throat> show don't tell. So you don't want to tell, but you're certainly uh, showing it, bro. Well, it's really like when you're saying I've uh, got a four million dollar uh, diamond, I've got all these cars. Uh, like people are stupid. They're like, all right, this guy's got money. Yeah. yeah. Like so, whether you said you were worth ten million or ten billion, people are like, this guy's got money. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The the thing is like not money's a force multiplier. So it's just like violence. You can use violence to make the world a better place, or you can use it to make the world a worse place. And money is similar. You 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 know, what are you doing with your money? Mm-hmm. Like like for instance, I'll give an example. Buying all those exotic like luxury watches, I'm actually enslaving a Swiss person to stare at a microscope for a year. That's actually sucks, right? Like his life sucks, his back hurts. I now I have something that tells time poorly. Mm-hmm. My phone murders it as far as to actually telling time goes. And, and nobody buys a watch to tell you what time it is. Exactly. Yeah. It's a, it, you know. Right. So, you know, I it's unfortunate that I am forced to enslave old Swiss people in order to flex so people like me more. I wish there was a better way. Well, why way do you to look at it, it as like enslaving Swiss people? They're getting that's no. how they make their money. money. That's how they provide income. Yeah, that's a like, different tra- it's a different way of looking at it. I appreciate yeah. what you're saying, but that guy's like, yeah, I need a job and this is where I'm going to work. It's an entrepreneur. I would rather see him do something else. But I, I, someone has who to gives do a it? shit what that guy does though? <laughs> I the care. Swiss I want to make the world better. Like I want okay. I want I want the world to work better. I want politics well, you're a capitalist. to work better. Yeah, but so okay, let's take Steve Jobs, right? When you went back before the iPhone existed and you asked people, what do you want out of your phone? Their answer would be more buttons. And then he's like, "Uh, wait a second. Actually, I don't care what you want. I'm going to make you want what I think you really should want. Mm -hmm. And here's a phone with almost no buttons. And that's what worked out to be wildly superior. Yeah, I remember when they were like, yeah, yeah, no buttons anymore. What? what? What's going on here? Yeah. And so if you really care about the world and you want to make it better, you have to get people to like what is in their own best interest, even if at the beginning they don't want to. Okay. And and so like, I'm looking at for systematic ways to improve efficiency, and I'm able to influence people in some ways to do that. Like delaying gratification is highly regarded as the most successful investing strategy. Of course. We directly monetize that with hacks. We, you mint yourself rewards for waiting, and and that that idea delayed gratification. Yeah. Put in the chat. That idea of do the thing that hurts now, but do way better later, mm-hmm. is all of personal development, all of weightlifting, all of education, even all of relationship. Like mm-hmm. you're gonna have to go talk to a girl that doesn't know you. That's gonna suck, and mm-hmm. most of the time they're gonna tell you to buzz off. But sometimes it's gonna work, and then mm-hmm. you're gonna feel great. So, I, I basically monetize the most important investing concept to ever exist, and it's been the highest performing asset. And when you say the most important investing, you're saying long-term investing? Well, you said it earlier. You you said it earlier. Time in the market, not timing the market. Exactly. But there are exceptions to that. You know, I called the top on Bitcoin on the day. If you can, if you if you have a crystal ball and you have, have, and you have, have a predictor, a then yes, that's the best thing to do. Ball. For Bitcoin price, I have a crystal ball. I've, I've called the Bitcoin top twice. Okay. On, like, basically on the day. And no one else does. Like, they all get it wrong. They're just, they think, oh, we're going to the you're moon. You're saying you've seen the like, when it hit 60? I, it's, I have that? the evidence. Okay. <laughs> I don't delete my calls. I said this is the top. Let me. Be, <laughs> so make a prediction now. Where is mm-hmm. where's Bitcoin buy, going in it, the next 24 months? Down to 11K. Down to 11. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's the bottom. Yeah. And then basically. Where's the top, you think? In the next 24 months. Well, it's on its S curve. It's the top of its S curve, but no one realizes it. So the world's richest guy bought. El Salvador made it legal tender. Everyone and their mother bought. And after they all bought, the price barely moved up. It only didn't. It went from a 20K all time high five years ago mm-hmm. to a 69K now. Yep. It did a three and a half X its all time high in five years. Meanwhile, Hex did 10,000 X and Ethereum mm-hmm. did, you know, so like from the COVID dip, Ethereum went from 88 to 5,000 and Bitcoin went from 3,800 to 69,000. So Ethereum outperformed Bitcoin 3X and, and is likely to continue to do so. It's a superior technology. So are you, based on <clears throat> sort of your tone, are you are you not a fan of Bitcoin? Are you not? I think, uh, so, you... I think Bitcoin's garbage. Garbage? It's better than the S&P 500. Yeah, it destroys the environment. The more valuable it is, the more the environment it destroys. Pulse Chain solves this. Um, it uh, is slow. It's expensive. It has no roadmap. It has no anonymity. You know, it has no stable coins on it. It has no tokens on it. It has no time deposit on it. The fans are rabid scumbags. Like they just, they're like, you know, if you like anything other than Bitcoin, you're a demon. Well, there's you're Bitcoin like, maximalists, right? right? Yeah, they're scumbags. So it, how, to explain, this is not my world. I mean, I'm yeah. in the money game regular, but not yeah. crypto. Crypto seems to be very tribal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? There's like you're yeah. like you 
the people that follow you and that follow Hex are like, Hex, you know, yeah. whether you're a Bitcoin person, there's people that believe in Ethereum and all the everything, the capabilities that can happen with that. There were Dogecoin, coin, the safe moon, all this stuff that's out there. Why is crypto so tribal? And what what is what differentiates Hex that's better than you're saying you're basically saying Bitcoin ain't shit, Ethereum's nothing, and all these other Well, no, Ethereum's pretty badass. Okay. That's why I'm copying it. Like, gotcha. Yeah. All right. So explain the tribal of crypto and the the, so you, the pros and cons of what you're seeing out there. You have light tribalism in stuff like Apple versus Android, mm -hmm. Ford versus Chevy. You've got light tribalism there. You've got more advanced tribalism in sports team versus sports team. Mm -hmm. People get the tattoos. They wear the stuff. Right. But the Yankees, Red Sox, <coughs> the yeah. whole thing. So exactly. Celtics, Lakers. <clears throat> the issue is that in those particular uh, collectivisms, they're not your life savings. Right. And when someone else defects from your team and hurts the price, now your life savings are injured. Gotcha. Now and there's so, money on the line. There's skin right. in the game. It's yep. not just, hey, I'm rooting for my team. Right. So, so the it, tribalism it, is even that more enhanced, is what yeah, you're people, saying. Yeah, people, people. And even if you didn't put your life savings in, these things appreciate in value so much that it becomes your life savings unless yeah. you're constantly selling. Got it. Because you, ha you would have to constantly sell to try and maintain a, that as a small portion because it outperforms everything else. Like, there's no question. Unless you bought the top. And then if you're following me, you probably didn't. Um, so yeah, I think that's very important that you point out. If you bought the top, if you bought Bitcoin at 69 and sure. now it's at 22, yep. you're like, Richard, what the are you talking about? Yeah, because Should have followed me on Twitter. Twitter.com <laughs> slash Richard Hartwin. Could have saved you from that. So it's like, now that tribalism, you have to ask yourself, is it useful or is it non-useful? And the answer is both. It stops people from buying scams. That's good. So if you're a Bitcoin maximalist, you're not going to buy scams because Bitcoin is not a scam. It's right. at the top of its S curve. It dumps as hard as everything else, and it doesn't pump as hard. Its pumps get lower and lower every single cycle. It's too heavy now. It's slow. It's old. There's no improvements to it, et cetera. But it still works, and it's still better than getting scammed on, mm -hmm. like, Celsius, which is bankrupt, or Luna, which went to zero, or, you know, all these other things I've warned people about that they don't listen. I begged people to remove their coins from Celsius. Really? Cryptocurrency was invented to remove middlemen. Of course. You give your coins to someone else, and you beg and hope that they give you more back. No, that's the opposite of why crypto was invented. And I specifically invented a product to let you earn interest and generate yield holding your own keys. No one can screw you out of them. Like, mm -hmm. your keys are your keys. No one can ever stop you from minting your own rewards. It's perfect. It's flawless. It's amazing. It directly solves all these people trying to earn 7 or 8% yield. And then losing everything because the guy that said he was going to pay the yield, he runs off with the cash. Which, by the way, you know who else did that? The original Ponzi. The dude named Ponzi. Yeah, I think it might have been ago. Alfred Ponzi. Yeah. I don't remember his first name. Billy Ponzi. That dude, he said, hey, give me all your money. I'm yeah. going to show you some returns. Mm -hmm. We've got this fancy stamp arbitrage you know, using the mail system. And the funny thing is he actually did on a very small scale. It just couldn't work at a big scale. And then now you get, you know, Celsius, like, oh, there's no risk. Just uh, just give us all your money. We're going to go do, you know, fancy stuff. Mm -hmm. And then, like, no, they were taking huge risk. And, yes, they did lose money. And, yes, they are bankrupt. Like, So the difference between – I tell you Hex is extremely volatile. It dips all the time. It's a feature, not a bug, right? That's where the people that bought tops and sold bottoms give their money to people that bought bottoms and sold mm -hmm. tops. That's how all of investing works. I tell you that this is extremely volatile. I tell you that crypto drops 85 95% really often. Nobody else does that. Which 85, is so 90 percent. Yeah, I've been. Yeah. I've been. In, I mean, my introduction to Bitcoin from thirty to two was a ninety-five percent dump. Right. And and you know, then it went from. So just 12. be prepared to get wrecked if you. But but sell that, it. That's the advantage. Volatility is the price you pay for the world's best performing asset. Period. Well, and what's that? Just crypto. Crypto in general? in general and hex. I mean. But you can't say that crypto in general because there's different different. That's like saying. Oh no! Stocks. Everything. Oh, bro! No, 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 no! I can. Okay. Absolutely every crypto dumps 85 to 95% except stable coins, and they have tail end risk where they can just go to zero by mm -hmm. government decree or by like Luna having an algo stable coin that just the algo fails. What percentage of – there's how many coins out there? 10,000 coins, sure. give or take? Yeah, sure. What percentage will be here in 10 years? Well, hopefully quite few, but in reality, the number will just keep going up. So like, the, I mean – Of the, the 10,000, you don't think they're all going to – 95% of them are going to fail? They will exist, but their prices will be far lower than where they started. Can we like, pull up that crypto chart? Uh, I appreciate you being uh, candid about this. Oh, for sure. Um, I'm here to save people. <laughs> I appreciate that. No, not that. That's We'll get to Hex in a sec. Sure. Top 10 cryptos in the world. Mm. Let's just go over the top 10. You'll notice Hex isn't there because they literally gatekeep us on purpose. 
These guys are scumbags. We have really, yeah. this is other hexagons have sued this company because it's garbage what they do. Why? We'll put, no matter what hap- no matter what happens to the hex price, we're yeah. always on the top of page three, even though we belong on the top. What of page number one. are you on this list? This is crypto market cap. What is this? Coin Coin Market Cap. Okay, is a scumbag website that lies about the market. What caps. website should we pull? I just want to go over the top ten cryptos and get your, your sure. Opinion okay, on sure. Bitcoin, Ethereum. Yeah, good. I'm ready. Okay. Well, no, I mean if we're on a different website. We'll go to a different website. Oh, that's okay. Okay, so stay on that site. It's all good. I mean, but the you can, um, on, you can just go on that site. It's like whatever. The I just want to get your opinion sure. on each of these yeah. cryptos. Okay. Give us the, the the so Bitcoin number one. You're not a fan. Well, it it works. Mm-hmm. It just has limp dick gains <laughs> and the same dump. So Bitcoin dumped seventy five percent from mm-hmm. sixty nine down to seventeen four. Ethereum dumped from five k down to number two eight, Ethereum. You're saying. Yeah. Okay. And Hex dumped from sixty or well, fifty five point six cents down to you know. Three cents. If you could write this article right here, because we're going to sure. go through the top 10. If you yeah. could write this legitimately, where would Hex, should it be? Because you're saying they're kind of shadow banning well, you from the top just, of the list. No, we'll just we'll go to the third page and we'll look at what they, they say the market cap actually is. And then gotcha. you can rank it yourself. So go to page three. Well, by the way, so Bitcoin dumped 75. Yeah. Ethereum dumped 85. Hex dumped 95. And mm-hmm. when they bounce, which one do you think is going to bounce the hardest? It's like the rubber band effect you're saying. Whoever goes down the well, most is going to come back. The thing that has the least... it. When you only have 100,000 stakers, it's so much easier to drive up the price because there's so much less for sale. It's a smaller mm-hmm. market cap. When things get heavier, they require more economic energy to move them. So, Is this just the principles of supply and demand just yes. basically broken They're, down into crypto? B- b- Elon Musk, Tesla bought a billion and a half of Bitcoin. No one noticed because it barely moved the price. So if you want something that chucking a billion, it barely moves it, that's Bitcoin. Yeah. But if you put a billion into Hex, what do you think happens to the price? It would be up like another 10,000x or more. Got like it. Did probably you find Hex on this X. list? Yeah. So number? they say... Mm. Hex is market, number 201. Coin market cap themselves on their own website yeah. says that Hex's market cap is $8 billion. Okay. And just above it is something with $100 million. So explain that math to me, dog. Explain that. Where do you see the $8 billion? He has mouse oh, over 7. it. Oh, 7.9. Got yeah, it. Yeah, that's $8 billion. And then Got you it. scroll up and there's something with $100 million. Well, explain to me that difference, how that works. How is number 201... Ranked lower than number two hundred, but its its market cap mm-hmm. is seventy times higher. Are they doing like, like an average? It's scumbag. No, 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 they're being scumbags. They manually put us on the third page on purpose. They're scumbags. So people can see it. So if we saw, go to the top. <clears throat> yeah. So so if you see, if you solve for market cap. Yeah. So right? seven so seven billion would stick us at number. So if you just solve for market cap, it would be at like number fourteen. I think we would be number fourteen. Mm. Using their own numbers. Yeah, exactly. But they're scumbags. So you're like, no, cancel that. Terrible. Just hit market cap at the top, and then it'll. it'll so it'll, what site do you for... do you look at for this? I don't. I think that if you're Keep looking going. at one of these sites, you're looking to get wrecked. This is where you go find scams to get wrecked on. Mm. Like I, I'm not a fan of. So people then where going do people look for the right <clears throat> things? Well, I mean, look, you bought some place that sells it. That's the price you paid, and if you're gonna sell if, and if you're going to take the other side of the transaction and get out of it, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. go to where you're going to sell, and that's the price that you're actually going to get. Like, mm-hmm. it, what matters isn't what these things say; it matters is what you actually can buy and sell for. Got it. Right. So, um, so I can go if you want me to go to the top ten. I can do it. Yeah, yeah. let's go to sure. the top ten. <clears throat> mm-hmm. no. So you might have to get out of solving for market cap. Why are they the solving for market cap at the top anyway? By the way, it's this really is, suspect. Sorry, it's really yeah. suspect. I am clicking market cap, and yeah. I may be using the website wrong. They're not. They're just they're literally not. manually scumbag. Or you can just go by price. Okay. okay. So, all right. I'm so Bitcoin number cap. one, Ethereum yeah. number two. Then you got Tether. Thoughts on Tether? Mm. Well, I mean, we don't need to do a whole ass- assertion. Just quick, yeah, sure. you know. Well, it's I of all the stable coins, I. Yeah. Uh, don't like that one because there's too much risk in it. You just don't. It's it's all offshore, right? Mm-hmm. So USDC is all onshore. If you have to sue somebody, you can. Tether's all offshore. If you have to sue somebody, mm-hmm. good luck. And so I'd rather have counterparties that are easier to sue if I you know need to. So I, I prefer USDC to Tether. I prefer Dai to either of them. Mm-hmm. Dai is like backed by Ethereum. Well, it's also kind of sixty percent backed by USDC, unfortunately. But they're thinking about changing that. We recently had like some government crackdowns and crypto. What number stuff. are you on right now? Thirteen. Dying. Okay. Thirteen. Mm-hmm. By the way, so all right, just rounding out the top ten. Um, Binance, XRP is that Ripple, Cardano, Solano, Dogecoin, Polkadot, Shiba Inu. How the fuck is Dogecoin, Dogecoin still in the top ten? Yeah. <sighs> the world's richest guy shills it occasionally. You're saying Elon is still protecting mm-hmm. Dogecoin. 
But he's the that reason mean, that it kind of got wrecked after he went on SNL, remember? He's like, yeah, it's a hustle. You know, but like, okay, here's what's up with crypto, man. If mm-hmm. you look at the dumps only, you're going to be left behind and cry because like Bitcoin dumped 85%. Mm-hmm. And then it done it again, and then it did it again, and then it did it again. And after all those 85% dumps, it was up 690 million percent. Mm. Because when you run up 100x and then you dump 90%, it only cancels out 10x. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, you know, when Hex, when Hex goes up 10,000x and then dumps 90%, we're still up 1,000x. Yeah. Literally, right now. We're up, we're it's up the t- roller coaster effect. Yeah. But, but what goes but, up must come down. But basically, you're you saying, hey, guys, heads sides. up. These things are going down. Even after Doge dumped like hell, it's still up massive when you, when you bought earlier. Correct. So like, Depending you, on when you bought. You, exactly. You have to look. That's why charts are great. The people that bought here made a lot. The people that bought here lost a lot. But in general, yeah. you're still up. Like, very few people are down on Doge so unless just, they bought do, recently. Do you advocate just a dollar cost average just across the board? I mean, when you have the best performing asset class, then by and large only goes up and to the right. I mean, you do get these 85% dips, but I, I, I think that I go in hard and early. There's a 90% dip right now in Hex. Mm-hmm. I put my best friends on like, you should go in. Now, now not a financial advisor, do your own research, et cetera. But my best friends, yeah. I said, hey, man, they, they were like, Richard, we missed this the first time. I'm not going to miss it again. Yeah. And so when they had the opportunity, a 90% dip to get in. I get in. Listen, to be frank, yeah. and call me an idiot, call yeah. me a moron. When Bitcoin went from sixty nine to twenty, I bought five more Bitcoin. Boom, you done. Five yeah. you know, hundred grand in Bitcoin. Mm-hmm. Cool, great. I had a couple before that, yeah. but I was like, "Fuck it, let's do this." I've never yeah. been an advocate of the, the. I mean, I tell people two to five, three to eight percent of your liquid net worth diversify, put into crypto. That's. My- I don't understand why everyone advertises this diversification crap. Diversification is garbage. Like, tell me I'm Warren, Tell me I'm wrong. Teach Buffett, me something. Go yeah, ahead. Warren Buffett himself says it's stupid, and he only has to do it because he has so much money. He what, has no choice. What do you mean by diversification? Yeah. You think I should People, put 100 percent into crypto? Yep. Yes, I do. Really? really? Yes, I do. So you shouldn't have. Hear me out. Yeah. Anything in the stock market. Forget nope. about 401ks, Roth IRAs. Forget about all that kind nope. of stuff like that. Um, REITs, real estate, anything with that. Trash. All trash. All trash. So the only thing you're saying 100%, you said cash and crypto. Yes. Cash yep. and crypto. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's worked out real good for me. <laughs> I'm sure it has. So like, But you also got into Bitcoin when 2011, when it was fucking 10 cents. Yeah, so but like, right. you're, Ethere- you're a Ethere- godfather in that Ethereum respect. was just 88 bucks like a year and a half ago. Now it's, uh, you know, 2,000 bucks. Mm-hmm. So, you know, the, these opportunities keep availing themselves. Pulsechain.com is going to come out you know, hopefully soon. Hex.com is on a 90% dip now. Like, we have these things where you're lucky enough that they dip that you can get an entry. There's some things that never dip. Like, like try and catch a dip on, like, uh, Amazon. I guess you can. But, yeah, but, but if you look bit, at the chart, crazy. if yeah. you look at the chart historically, it is, like, up and to the right forever. And mm-hmm. it's, like, so why would you... Okay, here's the theory. Someone, someone somewhere said that you should diversify, and then everyone thought, yeah, that sounds good. But then they never actually put any thought into it. Like if I were to, I could beat you up about this. You I know want what? you to. I, I want to learn something. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. Why do you think diversification is good? Well, asset allocation. You're saying. I mean, how, I, I'm not, not going to keep. Answer. Okay, hear me out. I'm not going to keep all my I'm money in cash. Bust your balls on this. Fine. I'll, okay. I want to learn. So all right. it's all good. We're, okay. we're having fun. All right. I don't want to keep all my money in cash. I'd sure. probably say 10% of cash my... Cash is trash. It just goes to zero. Cool. I get that. Yeah. But on, the only super, super wealthy people can dare say cash is trash. 75% well, of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck, brother. Go tell the average American that cash is trash. You're going to get slapped in the face verbally, not physically, okay? <laughs> so you can't say that. Ray Dalio said that at the World Economic Forum in fucking Davos uh, pre-COVID, uh, and then it was like, everyone's like, yeah, thanks, Ray Dalio. You're a billionaire hedge fund guy. The rest of the world needs cash. They don't, but respect. Though. What do you mean they don't need cash? You do, you, when you have the ability to instantly convert a real asset into cash on a just-in-time basis, you do not need to expose yourself to the only goes to zero fiat currency horror. And the rest of the world has it far worse. The dollar is at all-time low value, but other currencies are at 40-year low value versus the dollar. So mm-hmm. those guys got screwed even harder. Yeah, the dollar's pretty strong right now. Actually. Yeah, the euro lost a third of its value yes. over the last 14 years versus Correct. the dollar, and the dollar lost a massive amount of its value mm-hmm. versus the stuff that you want, like versus Big Macs. They, they keep getting more expensive. So 
It's not yeah, the, the, I go to the uh, if you go to the dollar store, everything's two bucks now. Right. The dollar menu at yep. McDonald's, everything's like dollar forty nine. Yeah. It's like yep. what just happened here, yep. guys? One hundred percent, bro. One hundred percent. It's because it, it's not because the stuff went up in price. It's because the dollar is worth nothing now, and it will continue to do that. They will mm-hmm. continue to devalue that dollar until it's worth nothing. So if you can sit in any type of real asset that they just don't print for fun all the time, mm-hmm. like the dollar, and then convert as needed, then you don't get wrecked holding the dollar. Like if you if you if you had a hundred thousand dollars of savings ten years ago, well, guess what? The interest rate you earned didn't mm-hmm. meet inflation. You lost money saving. Okay, let's play a game. Yeah. Ready? Because I want to. I still go- got to bust your balls yeah. on why diversification sucks. I want to. I want to stay yeah. here. Sure. So if you, uh, this is about that diversification. Yeah. Yeah. Let's say someone has a hundred grand in cash. Yeah. Let's just use an easy number. Mm-hmm. Some people be like, "Oh my god, I wish I had a hundred grand." Some people be like, hundred grand. I mean, I'm a fucking millionaire. He's probably losing four percent of your okay. holding. Okay. In in. Adjust, Most adjusted. people would say, all right, you take a good portion of that, make sure that's in your retirement account, retirement fund. I assume you're not ha- working with 401ks mm. these days, bro, or Roth IRAs. Peter Thiel just turned a 401k into like $5 billion somehow, yeah. but that's a you know that's a well, whole other story. I, it's very easy. He just put his shares of his startups in the thing. That's it. It's a tax. Yeah. You can tax stick advantage, shares in it. Tax-free, yeah. the whole thing. Yeah. But a lot of people will say, have some of the stock market. You know, have some stuff yes, in real estate. But why though? Okay. Why? Because crypto Tell didn't exist why. at that point, bro. Mm-hmm. Tell me. Yeah. When did so crypto stupid. become mainstream? It was stupid then when, too. When did crypto become mainstream? Like to the point Never. where you could it's say. It's still not mainstream. It's That's why there's still opportunity. Now. No, it's still not mainstream. That's why there's still opportunity. Meaning like. If I put a gun uh, like in your in head. Like in the nomenclature. If people know what Bitcoin is. Send me $1,000 with your crypto wallet right now. You'd be dead. Because you don't have that. Like, you don't have a crypto wallet in your wallet phone. You don't have $1,000 to send me. You probably don't know how to use it. You don't remember your password. It's not mainstream at all. It's not mm-hmm. mainstream at all. So, you're saying was, the actual concept of having a crypto wallet. Everyone, yeah, what, nobody I, what, uses what I mean, it. Is, what I mean is everyone knows what Bitcoin is. Right. No, that's mainstream. I don't, I don't think they do. They don't Richard, know details, how are you, but everyone they know knows what, what Bitcoin they know is. It's... No, they don't. Sh- we Point could, to somewhere hey, in the world that they don't know where Bitcoin mobile. is. We could go mobile and just interview people on the street on this one. Like and say, and say you, have you heard of Bitcoin? But what does that mean? It doesn't matter if they've heard of it. But that's it, what mainstream is. Yeah. Pop culture, Dark. they know about it. I'm not saying they have a crypto wallet. Mm-hmm. And then they can... I'm not saying... I think, I think cell phones were mainstream when people owned them, not when they heard of them. I think crypto is mainstream when you have a wallet, not when you heard of it. I don't think heard of it is a good... Mesh, like, heard of it is not useful. Like, people, people have heard... Like, People heard of Tiger King. Doesn't mean he's mainstream. Anyway, so look, back to the yeah, diversification. Back to diversification. Diversification okay. is retarded. It's really stupid. Here's a good performing asset. Here's an amazing performing asset. And here's a trash performing asset. Let me get a, a little bit of each one. Let me let me sprinkle some dookie mm-hmm. on my spaghettios because like it's different. And different's better for a reason I can't answer. Like, no, different's not better. You've got something that's the best performing asset class of all time, which mm-hmm. is cryptocurrency, that removes counterparty risk, which makes things more efficient, which solves problems like the one that you saw in Canada where you buy a sandwich for someone at a political event and now they seize your bank account. Yeah. That happened. I remember. Canada seized people's bank accounts for Very buying well sandwiches yes. for other people Horrible performing situation. a peaceful Horrible situation. Crypto solves that. Like mm-hmm. there's so many things wrong with the world right now and one of the only good things out there that's solving some of those things is cryptocurrency. Mm-hmm. And so not only do you get to be rich and, and mm-hmm. actually own your own money and actually hold your own keys and not have to beg the credit card company to turn your card back on, to beg your credit card company or your bank to send the money where you want to send it with worse hours, worse fees, the lowest interest rates that have ever existed. It's all the, the least number of branches, the least number of ATMs, an actual war on cash globally. Everything sucks except crypto. It's going good. So why would I dilute my crypto gains when I could buy the dip with a bunch of this other garbage that takes 14 years to 2x? And I'm still paying capital gains tax. I'm still only paying 20% cap gains tax if you hold it a year. Why, like, why would I bother with all that stuff that sucks? Now, I can answer that question for you. Okay? I can mm-hmm. tell you the reason why people thought that uh, diversification made sense. If you have a bunch of things that are volatile mm-hmm. and you spread that volatility out, it reduces the chance that if you have to sell for some reason, you're selling at like a local bottom in that thing. And so if you spread your volatility out a bunch across, across a bunch of stuff, then you, you can end up with slightly better returns. Or you could just buy the thing that went up a million percent. <laughs> Instead of this limp dick trash, wait 14 years to get a 2x. And by the way, that's still better than real estate. Like the stock market's still better than real estate and it, historically. So like if you only have cash, please buy an index fund. 
of the S&P 500. Mm-hmm. If you have real estate uh, stuff, probably you're going to do better in stocks. They traditionally do better. But you're crypto, saying real estate traditionally does better than stocks? No, the other way. Stocks, stocks do better, better than real estate. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. So like, Correct. And then why not just do the thing that overperforms? Like, you could have invested 10 times less money and made 10 times more money mm-hmm. in crypto. And then, ha- and then like, you have less risk. Like, you only put up, ten- you only put up one-tenth of the money that you would have otherwise had to put up. And by the way, you can buy the top in real estate. Like, I think the real estate top's in. Like, as long as interest rates go up, real estate goes down, period. Same with stock market. That's why it's hard to tell what the Bitcoin bottom will be. Because it's based on the interest rates. So Bitcoin is totally correlated to the stock market. Stock market's inversely correlated to interest rates. Interest rates go up, stocks go down, houses go down, everything goes down. It's just on a delay. I called the watch top too. Like when the watch top was in, I called mm-hmm. it publicly. I'm like, when was the top of the watch market? When they started raising interest rates. It's, yeah. that, it's that easy. Beginning of the year. No. Yeah. So You're nodding over there. All right, l- listen, we, we probably got, I don't know, at least a half hour left. I would like to spend more Please. time with you than that. No. Um, but let's get into some stuff. We got some super chats out yes. there. What do we think? We got some super so real quick, the read summary. Them out. The yes. summary. Diversification for idiots. No one that does it can even explain why they're doing it. They just mm-hmm. heard it was good to do. And in reality, instead of buying a thing with the best gains, you're just buying a bunch of trash because you don't know any better. I hear you. No. A part of it, you brought up the S and P 500. That's the whole. The, why buy five companies? Why buy a hundred companies? Buy five hundred companies. That's diversification. Kind of, but maybe. I just like its chart. Look. There's a price chart. Mm-hmm. You buy here, you sell there. It's called speculation. I want the best price chart. If you have a crappy price chart, people try and make up with it with leverage. They get liquidated. They pay a lot of fees. You don't need to leverage up. When when Ethereum went from eighty eight bucks to five thousand bucks, or when Hex went from point oh 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 five six five five to point five six five five, an actual ten thousand X, diversification doesn't matter. I, I bought the world's richest. I, I bought the world's largest diamond with crypto. I bought ten million dollars of watches. Mostly with crypto. I bought $3 million of cars, all with crypto, except for one. Yeah. So, like, there's no reason to have Olympic gains in your life. Never. <laughs> Respect. Do you want to get to these uh, super chats? Yes, let's get to Let's oh, do it. By the way, you guys listening, most of you listening will probably buy a scam coin or some stupid coin that will go to zero. And you'll be like, that Richard gave me bad advice. Buy coins that have product market fit that have existed for years. Don't get scammed. Which coins do you mean? Well, if you buy all these new coins that people are launching all the time, a lot of them mm-hmm. go straight to zero. They have bugs, they have flaws, they're scams. You know, if you buy coins that are just stupid meme coins, they're fun while they're fun, and then they're not fun anymore. Well, what are the good People, coins you're saying? Mm-hmm. I mean, Ethereum is a good coin. X is a good coin. Um, I like those ones the best. Mm-hmm. Uh, Do you have I, a top five if you could? Nope. No <laughs> I mean, top five. I'm a Richard Hart maximalist, bro. So, like, <laughs> next year it's going to be Pulse Chain, Pulse X, Hex on the Ethereum network, Hex on the Pulse Chain network. Um, but, like, it, why would you want worse gains? So like Ethereum is now changing the way that they do the mining. They're trying mm-hmm. to do what Pulse Chain does, which is switch to proof of stake from proof of work. So you don't have to blow up the environment. You don't have to pay for mining hardware. You don't have to pay those big electricity bills. You don't have to dump the price to do it. So they're, they're reducing their issuance rate. So when, if, and when they get to Ethereum 2.0, which they think will happen in the next 25 days, 27 days, um, it will greatly reduce the amount of new supply. Now, you dumb dumbs watching think this is a, a time to jump in. You're the reason by the rumor sell the news events exist. Everyone else already front run this, all right? Maybe it'll pump for this by the rumor sell the news event, but as soon as the thing launches, all the staked ETH becomes available. And 10% of the pl- supply was locked on the main chain mm-hmm. and will only become available for dumping once ETH 2.0 launches. Well, guess what, man? That's a lot of supply to come available at once, and you idiots are going to be the liquidity that gets dumped into. Do you, know, are- do you know what he means when he says buy the news, sell the rumors? No. Buy the, rumor, buy the rumor, sell the news. Sorry, buy, buy the, the rumor, rumor, sell the news. The news. You've heard yeah. it before? Yes, I've heard that. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. It's basically so, when it's in the news, yeah, it's, everyone yeah, knows about but, it already. Right. Okay. I'll give an example. Yeah. Coinbase listing on uh, NASDAQ. Yeah. Guess what, bro? That's when I call the top. That's the top. Yeah. It mm. Everyone was ready for it. Yes. It's going to change everything. Yeah. It's a paradigm shift. Yeah. And that's the top. Yeah. You guys already bought. All that's left is sellers. Wrecked. I called mm. on the day. Crystal Ball, you got some super chats? Go yes, through those, please. super chats real quick. So we have Ballot Brand, 133. Thank you. He said, Richard changed my life following him since the beginning of 2017. Thanks for having him on. Then we had Dolomite Hex, 55. Thank you. Richard Wright, the best man in crypto. Uh, RH Max, Richard's at, uh, $55. Richard has the only products in crypto worth your time and effort. Thousands of millionaires made already. It's no joke. This is man is changing the world. 
Then we have Hex Yoda, $50. Ask Richard how he, he's he been so right about everything while everyone else has been so wrong. What's the sorcery in this? I'm a damn genius. <laughs> <laughs> then we have Mike's World, $5. Were you able to get the ENS blockchains domains? I see the prices are crazy. I think those are trash. I hate all those fake domains. Mm. Hey, guys, we're going to sell you a domain that when you put it in a browser, it doesn't go anywhere. Mm. Are you guys all idiots? Yeah, that sounds you, you You type the stupid thing in the URL. It doesn't work. Stop. Like, it's so stupid. <laughs> then we have Hexcom55. He said, Richard Hart is a legend. What's up, everyone? 5555 five, 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 Club. Hex changed my life forever. We have another one, $50, cash plus. Sorry, guys, for showing up to the party late. Richard Hart is the best man in crypto. Um, and then we actually had Jory Hex in the chat. Mm -hmm. Jory, um, Jory. Yes, Jory. Uh, she said, stake, stake it till you make it. Wish I was there in Miami now. <laughs> and then we have another $5. Crypto is trash. Buy stock and profitable growing companies that make good <laughs> and service wrecked. that people want. Chris Peterson. Chris Peterson, you're wrecked, pleb. Let's go compare Chris networks, Peterson. dog. Um, okay, what is... And then, want to read Does the rest of them quick? People One are immune to charts. Yeah. I literally go on TradingView. Yeah. I pull up the S&P 500 chart. I scroll back 14 years to get my 2X. And then I go to the hex chart, and I scroll back 30 days to get the 2X. How stupid... It's math, bro. The math don't lie. So this guy, you would call him a hater, right? No, he's just... he's Well, he's just bad at math. Like <laughs> th th This is a very s s objective... Yeah. clinical mathematical measurement of time versus price. And you can do it for any type of asset that's mm -hmm. publicly traded. There's no reason to buy limp dick gains. There's not. Got it. The, um, anyway, the reason that I asked you that is because I told you I had a lot of, I, I'm not in the crypto space. I have a lot of friends that are. And I told people that you'd be on. I told you people were reaching out like crazy. Yeah. And a bunch of people, oh, bro, he's the fucking man. He's the bastard. And those people are like, yo, bro, can't trust that guy. Scam I artist. Yeah. Controversial. Yeah. So I want to address the controversy Please. head yes. on, brother. So, you Fired know, up. again, they said oh. all these, some positive, some negative. Mm -hmm. So they, some people, you brought up the word Ponzi scheme. That's yep. been used out there. Scam. Yep. This is, you use, yeah. anyone who brings up Ponzi, and when he's labeled a Ponzi, he's oh. either absolutely being honest or a fucking psychopath and he's like right. let me just embrace the lie yeah. so let's address some of the haters sure. out there what don't yeah. they understand about hex sure. or crypto and what don't they understand about you yeah so here's here's how the, the hater pyramid goes mm. first you have people that think that uh, all crypto is a scam no actually you got people that think capitalism is a scam <laughs> That's okay. then you got people that think the stock market's a scam mm -hmm. right and i just did a lot i just did an interview with the uh, the wolf of wall street mm -hmm. yeah jordan buffer yeah, yeah. And then you got people that who think scammed that everyone in the did. stock market. Let's he just did. be real here for a second. Convicted. So I don't know what kind of credibility he has, not regarding you, but just no, for sure. in the stock market. So yeah, he he knows how scams in the stock exactly. market work because exactly. he ran one of the biggest ones. <laughs> um, so then we've got okay, capitalism scam, stock market scam, crypto is a scam. Yeah, all of crypto is a scam except Bitcoin. All of crypto is a scam except Bitcoin Ethereum. All of crypto is a scam except whatever you bought. Yeah, right. And then you just have this like you know, hater list of like, and then I look at these things as tools, right? So when I go to my toolbox, I'm not like, Phillips head's a scam. I'm only a Torx head maximalist. <laughs> no, like they have different parameters. Like, yeah. People don't realize that the Phillips head was actually designed to strip out. Like, so it's, you know, meant to not, I'm not going to get into the wood shop work of it, but like, yeah, let's not lose our listeners yeah, by getting into yeah. wood. Guys, buckle up your seatbelts to put on your hard hat. <laughs> tool shop time. Tim the tool man Taylor, I, I Richard just, Hart in the house. I just installed two bidets for my mom last week. <laughs> nice. We saw that. Congratulations. Yeah. I hope uh, for everything's clean in that house. You can you, you can watch me install a bidet in 30 minutes from start to finish. <laughs> nice. On my do YouTube. it all. You do my, it all. My, anyway, the 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 crypto hater world. Right. Go. So, what I people people are so damn stupid. I got to educate everybody. So first, Ponzi scheme, okay? A Ponzi scheme collapses because it owes people money that it can't pay. Mm -hmm. It promises returns that it doesn't generate actual profit to pay. Mm -hmm. And therefore, to make up for the lack of profit, they steal from the investments of other people, the, early, the, the, the new newest people, yes. to pay the oldest people. Bernie Madoff. And then it collapsed. Bernie Madoff. At, like, and so what are the parameters by which you know you're dealing with a Ponzi? One, the original sin, the fraud, the lie. There is mm -hmm. a lie. They say there's a business activity that is profitable and that you will share in that profit. And in reality, there is not a profitable activity and you will only get your money stolen to pay somebody else. And notice there's huge counterparty risk. There's a guy in charge. There's a dude in charge. So the Securities Exchange Commission exists to prevent this particular form of fraud. Mm -hmm. doesn't always succeed. Bernie Madoff was licensed and regulated. And he Ron ran was, the goddamn NASDAQ at he some was point. The, he was the chairman of the board of the NASDAQ, yes. 
and talk about like, what's it yeah. called the 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 sheep in the uh, I'm sorry the wolf in the the wolf in the, 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 wolf in the yeah. sheep's uh, wolf in sheep's clothing yeah that whole thing so Enron was a scam Theranos was a scam yeah Bernie Madoff I don't remember what his thing was called that was a scam you know just getting uh, disclosures mm-hmm. from an entity and and being licensed to trade doesn't mean what you're doing isn't a bad idea right. or a scam so you have a Ponzi. If there's the original sin of deceit and there's a middleman mm-hmm. that stops paying you. Now, let's take Hex. Who's the middleman? There isn't one. There's just you. You mint your own coins just like a Bitcoin miner. No one gives them to you. No one holds them. When you lock your coins up, you destroy them. When your stake is ended, you mint new coins and you mint your rewards. So even the contract itself doesn't do custody. Mm-hmm. So you run your own code. You're the only person in the world that can pay your own returns. No one can stop you from doing it. It's sufficiently decentralized at launch. Unlike Ethereum, Ethereum launched. Ethereum had a crowd sale. People turned their Bitcoin into Ethereum, and then eventually they built it. Uh, you know, Bitcoin. They're working on it all the time. Hex is totally finished and complete and mm-hmm. uneditable and unchangeable. It's the least security-like of anything. It's the least counterparty risk. It's the maximum 100% uptime. We've had flawless, perfect operation with 100% uptime. Google hasn't. Google was down last week for 30 minutes globally. Microsoft hasn't. They were down globally a couple months ago. Hex has never been down. Bitcoin.org had a scam on their homepage twice, I think. Hex dominates all these things. Mm-hmm. But for some people, so for some reason, people are just immune to reality. You're like, guys, we're killing you. Guys. Well, let me ask you then. So fair to say with that explanation. So I beat, I beat the Ponzi one. Yeah, up. exactly. But we didn't, do, we didn't do pyramid or uh, bubble yet, which I'm ready next. Mm. But the, the, the answer is that it's neither of those, is what I assume, the, right? Real yeah. cryptocurrencies eliminate yeah. counterparty risk and eliminate middlemen. So here's my question. There's a lot of Be- fake ones Because there. there's a lot of people, yeah. I want to get to like the emotional, like when people say that about you, yeah. And you're not a con artist, and sure. you're not a scam artist, and yeah. you're not a Ponzi schemer. Yeah. How does that make you feel as a legitimate businessman? Well, it makes me very angry because I'm here. It, when they when they slander me and libel me, it makes it harder for me to change the world in a positive way. Mm-hmm. Because basically, there's a ten to one ratio of it takes ten units of effort to fight lies, and it takes one unit of effort to generate them, and therefore the asymmetry makes it a lot harder to to, to educate these people. Mm-hmm. So like. I'd rather take people. I would rather take people calling me a scammer than no news about me at all, because mm. some portion of those people will do their research and learn. Yeah. Like, you know the famous quote by Roger Stone. There's no such thing as bad news. Well, that too. But he right. says, "I'd rather be infamous than never famous at all." Right. Yeah. Do you abide by that? Yeah, it's true. If you mm-hmm. want to make a difference in the world, so take. Uh, so we've we've covered Ponzi. Mm-hmm. By the way, you know what you know what scammers leave a trail of victims. You know what victims do? They complain very loudly. Yeah, mm-hmm. I've been doing Especially business for days. fifteen or twenty years. Yeah, not a single human being's ever said I scammed them. Don't people that say that I'm a scammer? People have never worked with me, right. never participated in anything mm-hmm. I've done. Fair point. Never bought my products. Fair never point. used them. Like I had a car stereo store. People still mm-hmm. running around beating them trunks up with them. Be like just <laughs> they works good. Everything I've ever done, I've given people a good deal, great product, mm-hmm. great service every single time. Do you think it's because you're flashy and flamboyant and you're buying you know you're rocking these types of clothes that it's easier to label you a scam artist because if you For just sure. look at the if you came in here with a suit three-piece yeah. suit nice looking guy yeah. you're smart you, you carry yourself well mm-hmm. you know your shit yep. it'd be more advantageous or are you saying you know what i'm just gonna do what i gotta do and kind of flaunt and i don't care if you're if you're fat- you think you're bringing on heat is what i'm asking for sure so here's here's the way player hitting works evolutionary psychology would dictate that all of the feelings and emotions that you have have evolved to serve a very specific function to give you superior fitness. Mm-hmm. Player hating allows you to have an in-group and an out-group so that you have collectivism. And so in your group, you have an advantage. And then you've got the others, and we, we shun the others. And therefore, it's good to be in this group, and then we do better. We get you know better resources, better cooperation. And so when you come real fire like this, and you steal that significance by force, People fight back because they want that significance back for themselves. Like if I go into a room with other dudes, I'm getting looked at. They're not. Mm-hmm. And then they get mad about that. So they start trying to be like, oh, look at that bitch. Look at that bitch. And then, but as soon as they can get close enough that they think they can work with you, they flip and they like you a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh. And so the difference between these haters liking you or not is whether they think they can align with you or not. Mm-hmm. Because as soon as these guys, like a lot of dudes that used to like hate on me, they're chill with me now because they see the value. Mm-hmm. They're like, oh, he called the top of the day. Oh, he, you oh know. he made me money. Oh, he didn't mm-hmm. steal right. my money. He yeah. lose me money. Mm. Everything else failed. My yeah. stuff's been working perfectly. 
It's, the, the reckoning Proofs has the come here, guys. It's time. I was right about everything. It's time to uh, get your apologies ready. <laughs> you know the um, <clears throat> you start speaking about player hating. This is what they would call back in the day peacocking. Yes, sir. That's right. <laughs> Look at me. Like yeah. you're familiar with this. Mm -hmm. um, oh, by, oh, by the way, chicks. Yeah. The, as far as the girls thing go, if a girl has a high opinion of herself, yeah. this works a lot better. If a girl has a low opinion of herself, this is too spicy. She's afraid to talk to you because she'll see other other people will see her talking to you ah. and that freaks her out. So I actually do my highest, like my best work is actually done in a black t-shirt. Truthfully. Mm. This is better for dudes and really high value checks, but like for normal humans, black t-shirt kills. Okay, explain that mm -hmm. because you're saying this is better for very yeah. high confidence type of chicks yeah. who are like, yeah, I want the guy who's right. all swagged out. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. And dudes, because they'll be like, who's this motherfucker? Yes, What's this, exactly. this guy's deal? Yeah. But average normal, normal people are scared to be seen talking to you. It's, mm. too, it's too spicy. You're too out there. Right, okay. exactly. Because everyone sees. That's why like when you're going to, when you're, when you're talking to girls, it's nice if you can get isolation. Mm -hmm. I haven't I haven't done that properly in a really long time. You're like, hey, there's something I noticed about you. I don't want to say it in front of your friends. Just come over a second. I'm gonna give your friend back in just a second, mm -hmm. and then isolate, right? Mm -hmm. And then divide and conquer. Lean in, whisper in the ear, yeah. all that. But it's like I'm gonna buy you some Gucci slippers, girl. <laughs> oh my god, girl, do you want to? If, if I were gonna bring you on vacation anywhere in the world, where would I take you? You know. So like it's. I think black t-shirts underrated. It's amazing. I, lo I love mm. the black t-shirt. But, but if everyone did it. All I do is wear white yeah, t-shirts or black right, t-shirts. Yeah. I throw a jacket on I to look good with you. Uh -huh. Can we address, um, thank you for being real about yeah. the, um, just everything, pleasure, that, the, the accusations. We didn't cover bubble. We didn't cover It's all uh, kind of the same, mm -hmm. just Let me just cover shit real talking. It's real, go, go real for quick. it, go. MLMs require levels. There's no levels in Hex. There's no referral yeah. program. There's just you minting your own rewards in the contract, just like a Bitcoin miner without mm -hmm. destroying the environment. Basically, Hex is just Bitcoin with proof of work change. Bitcoin, you inflate to reward people to blow up the environment for security. Mm -hmm. Unfortunate, but necessary in their model. And then in Hex, we inflate low single digit percents, max 3.69%, but because it's on a seven year delay, it's vastly less but because people emergently staked on average seven years and it only comes out at the end. Uh, we just use Ethereum miners instead of Bitcoin miners and we inflate to protect the price instead of blow up the environment. It's more efficient, more efficient, less negative externalities. That's why we're up 250 or 300 fold versus Bitcoin. And we're up a thousand x versus the dollar in two or three years, so that covers the whole thing. That covers that covers MLM, which mm -hmm. is also a pyramid. That covers Ponzi and then Bubble. These yeah, are bubbles. The bubble? These are bubbles. They pop all the time. They keep getting back up. Now check this chart out. You see this yeah. chart? I'm going to mm -hmm. teach you about charts. Yay! The value of this chart is so that you could visually reason about data. Mm -hmm. You are using this chart improperly. If you ever look at any chart the way that you're looking at it, you will lose tons of resolution that you could have used to reason about things. So if you look at the last two years on the left there, it's a flat line that you can't think anything about mm -hmm. on the left side. Yeah. But if you what click- that, 20, 2020? Yeah, the 20, entire 20. past. So the yeah. price went up and down like tens and thousands of, it went up like tens and thousands of percent, but you can't see it because you're not using the chart properly. Mm -hmm. If you click the log button in the top right corner, you will reintroduce the resolution to the chart so that you can reason about the past. Mm. So what this does is it makes every doubling and every halving visual on the chart the same size. Mm. So a double up there and a double down there are now the same size. Whereas previously on the past chart, if you click log again, all that resolution on the left is totally and completely wiped out. Mm. And so that's the reason you have to click log on every chart. And now you see the reality. Now you see that almost everyone is up. For the vast majority of time, almost everyone is up. Period. Click log. So go to Bitcoin. Let's see what, yes, what sir. Bitcoin looks like on Excellent that chart. Excellent idea. Now we're getting somewhere. Carlos, thanks for being useful, bro. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that, that little one, that one change changes everything. The log button the is log massively button. If you important. take anything from this episode, nope. hit the log button log. on the charts. And yep. also hit the subscribe and like button. Oh, wow. This chart looks nasty. Y'all hit that <laughs> this now. Chart looks How many nasty. we got in the... In the um, click all and oh, log. Oh, we've got... Or oh, click all. 1500. 1500 watching, yeah. yes. 1500 watching. How many likes yes. do we have How so far? How many likes do we have so far? We've got 230 likes. So uh, that means that the people have math not thing. hit the like button, Richard. Can Dang, we tell guys, these people? Yeah. You, He's a you glass like has They're here to see you, bro. Can you ask your people to get the like button? Everyone, if you could click like that, be that'd fabulous. be very yes. nice for the everybody. The algorithm here. would appreciate that. Yes. yes. Um, if you, so, so thank you. This is yes, log. Break this down. Now, this looks like a chart of something that went from a penny to $69,000. This looks like the chart of something that went up 690 million percent. Now click log. And this looks like trash. 
So which one is more useful to you? The one that deletes all the resolution of the years 2013 to 2016, so there's a stupid flat line that is entirely useless mm -hmm. and, and makes it look like a giant bubble, mm -hmm. or this, which is more like, this is the reality. This is the best performing asset that has ever existed. So for the fifth graders out there, break down what this log button does so they understand it's the so everyone exact, gets this. It's the same exact data, yeah. and the, the y-axis, the vertical mm -hmm. axis, is um, compressed so that numbers up, the low numbers are uh, wider apart and the high numbers are smaller apart so that it shows you exponential growth the right way. Mm. Because like if something, it's the same exact data and you're just changing the y-axis to, to make it easier to reason about. This looks like what it should. This looks like an awesome investment. Hit the log button. Yeah. Got it. I just learned that. I've and, never hit the log button. And this is totally useless and has no way, resolution at all. Does this work the same way with, let's just every say, look at the S&P? You have to do it. We got to do it right now. I'm sorry, guys. The Go day. to the S&P 500. Yep. Yes. The log button. Yep. Never heard of this, Richard. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. It's it's mandatory. And you I'm have to in use finance. It. Why don't yep. they tell you? Hey, on, buddy, Adam. Adam, go look at the uh, log. Go look at the log chart. Yep. It, it, basically, if you don't use log, everything's a panic and everything's a bubble. It, hmm. Every single chart looks like horror if you don't use log. Is there a log button Do here? control F for log. Control F. This guy's teaching you what's going on. Yeah, I don't know this okay. charting thing. Anyway, no, we're, we're, no, no, just go to tradingview.com, type SP500. Tradingview.com. Yep. Mm -hmm. Also, don't pay them. Don't give them money. You can just buy the dip with that. Don't go to don't go to conferences. You can buy the dip with that. Don't buy monthly things unless you sell them. Sorry, buddy. You can buy the dip with that. If you buy coins instead of monthly things, you can make so much money, dude. Mm. Cut out your like stupid expenses that you can cut out and buy the dip. Not financial advice. I don't want to go to jail mm -hmm. because you, you invested wrong. Mm -hmm. Where should he hit log here? It's in the bottom right corner. Bottom but he's on, he needs to go to a wider time frame. Like uh, zoom in. Like you can just zoom out. I just click log and click auto. Yep. Go to all. There you go. Yep. Yep. Because this thing doesn't move that much, it doesn't make as big a difference. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. the, the, the gains are so limp. Hit all. On bottom left. Okay. No, it, it should make more of a difference here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You see the difference? Go back and forth. Toggle. Mm -hmm. There's that. Yep. Oh, damn. Yep. Interesting. Yep. Um, we're going to get to your questions. Mm -hmm. Um. I want to ask you about your safety, bro. Sure. Because people are like, dude, where does he live? Well, he's in Miami. People are yeah. saying that he's in Miami. Oh, my God. He's it's coming weird. to your studio. Yeah. So apparently you don't do a lot of live in-person interviews like this. You don't really announce your location. But like, is safety a concern of yours? I've had so many bad things happen I mean, to me. You saw about the, the Panama story. That'll, that'll yeah, get but I had bad paranoid. things happen to me here in Florida. Really? Like, yeah, I mean, I had a, a car stereo store. Mm. We had dudes come in and just mace everybody and like run out with stuff. We had a dude that was doing uh, credit card fraud, and we set up a sting operation with the uh, Secret Service, but they couldn't stay around long enough because the dude slow played and came late. So they left and like call Brad Sheriff's office when he shows up. So, you know, we all carried open carry at the time. Mm -hmm. I was carrying a 40, uh, 40 caliber Glock, and then uh, this dude pulls up his giant purple car <laughs> in getaway mode with the engine running, <sighs> doesn't even park it. And we're, we're like, yeah, man, like it's taking us longer to get the stuff than we thought. We call Sheriff's. Sheriff shows up, gets out of his car, huge Jack Black dude. No. And then uh, this guy gets in the big car and goes to like get away. And I pull my piece. I'm like, get out of the car, get out of the car. And then he tries to run me over with the car. So he stands on the gas, drops in gear, universal joint breaks. Axel falls on the ground, it's just laying there, ting to ting to ting to ting. Cops just staring at me like, like nothing's happening. I got my gun on this dude. This dude just tried to run me over. The cop's just still sitting there like, what's up? Like he just is waiting in queue at, mm -hmm. at the donut place or something. I'm like, yo, man. The guy starts running. I'm like, bro, do you want me to run after him? Like, that's the dude robbing us. Like, yeah. what are you doing? Mm -hmm. Like, do you want me to chase him? Mm -hmm. Just runs away. Just gets away. And you're like, this is the stupidest thing I've ever seen. And now, like, so now I've done, now I'm worried, right? Because what if this yeah. guy decides to come back on me for trying to sting him? You know what I mean? It sucks. Absolutely sucks. And I lived in that store. I lived in the back of that store. So my car stereo store, I lived in the mm. back of it. We built a like little house back there, like put a shower, you know. 
Um, so this, these are now two stories that they're dealing with. The Panama story that you told earlier, yeah. now this story. Yeah, and then you just get generally jumped. Yeah. Like This is like going so, to school you know, there's stuff. The, there's the famous phrase of the book, only the paranoid survive. Dude, are you I, slightly paranoid? When That's I hear, okay. When I hear people running up behind me, it's yeah. like fight time. It's go mm-hmm. time, right? Like when I pull up my car behind other cars, I don't never leave. I always leave a gap so that I can escape if I'm getting blocked on the side or that side for like to come at me. What's like, it like living with that? Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't, ha- like I don't, I don't like have this. to like look over my shoulder. I haven't done anybody dirty. Not that you have, but mm-hmm. it's people aren't coming after me. It sounds like people are. Did, didn't Fresh just get robbed like last month or something? Did he? I don't know. I heard. But why like, are you getting robbed if like you're not essentially like scamming people? Like, oh my God. Because they know did, you have money? Did, yeah. Didn't you ever hear the story that bad things happen to good people? Mm. Yeah, I've heard. That's Florida. I've like heard. that's the definition <laughs> of Florida. Florida's different. Like that guy ate somebody else's face. Do you think the guy that got his face yeah. eaten was like a bad guy? Like no, yeah, he's just yeah. a normal dude. Like most people are normal dudes. You know, I went to high school with that guy. Oh, really? The face eater. Wow. It was Rough. what was that like seven years ago in yeah. in Miami? Yeah. Yes, crazy Miami. story. But he went to North Miami Beach. I, I already, I already. Oh, I got. Pulled. Don't worry, I'm not going to. I your got face, stopped bro. by the really cool bath salts. Hey, I got stopped by the police for shopping already. Have, uh, really? An announcement to make. So. Oh yeah, we do have a big announcement. It's hey, look at that. 50th. Look, <laughs> big money, big money, big it's your money. Fiftieth episode. Look at that. Put that Happy right bro. here. Edible yes. Is that edible? Yes. All Get it's out all of here. edible. In celebration of. Can I have a hug? Yes. Sascas. Nice. Um, Thank you. Sascas episode. I'm so sorry. What's up with okay. all the hot short girls around here? Mm-hmm. Hot short on? girls. Yes, yes, no, yes. You guys are emptying the market. Thank you. Look at that. It came out of nowhere. Thank you. It's a very special celebration. Thank you, Elena. I'm excited to not to uh, get to wrecked over here. You, Is so. there anything to blow out? No. Uh, just Your reputation. <laughs> <laughs> um, Thank you for that. Appreciate yeah, it. Oh, Elena. I came got, out of nowhere. I got pulled over for shopping in Best Buy. I got really? pulled over by the police for shopping Why? inside Best Why? Buy on foot. Why? I bought so much stuff, so I thought I was doing credit card fraud. Really? No. Well, were you dressed like this? Yeah. Do you think that it, do you think that also kind of revs the I think, engine? I think, of the, I think the girl had a chip on her shoulder. I think she was mad at me a little bit because mm. I could tell mm. she's been bitchy, so I was like a little bit bitchy back. Do you think that because you dress like this and when you uh, interact with people, they treat most you kind like of it. bitchy? Most people like it. Really? Only, look, only there's only most people like it. Mm. Only some haters. Wooden mm. jewelry, green clothes, tree huggers. They're into it. People that hate capitalism, they're not into it. Or people that are, are like trying to compete that they can't like. Mm. Who do you think do, are? Do, do, you don't you don't understand the significance of being stopped by the police yeah. and detained and interrogated for shopping mm-hmm. because this is America. By the way, crypto solves this. Why did they think I was doing credit card fraud? Because they're not smart enough to use the pin code that comes in the damn card. If y'all stupid Americans would use this pin code, then when someone steals your card, they can't steal your money because they don't have your pin. Europe figured this out. So when you go use your... Man, I bought a million dollars of jewelry on my card. All good, bro. No problem. Here, I buy $10,000, and they think it's the world-ending situation. Yeah, because they don't they don't. Because they use signature it. instead of PIN. Use the PIN, please. But is there a PIN for credit cards? Not here in this stupid country, because y'all mm. know how to do math. But like in Europe, you use a PIN, and then if someone steals your card, it's not they mm. can't do nothing with you it. You still have an American passport? Yeah, yeah. Mm. That's the only passport I got. So, mm. you still Brand want- new, man. Brand new. Just got it. Ten Welcome years, to America, baby. Extra, Welcome extra America. stamps, extra pages, everything. I'm ready to rock. Um, mm. I want to get to a couple other topics because I know uh, time is precious. Saw a car accident here, too. Driving at night. Mm. It, it, here, you hear him. Yes. Look at my rear view. See him spinning. You get to participate in the accidents here. rest of the world, you just see them after they happen. Here, you hear him. Oh, you feel them. I don't like Are you hating story. on America? I'm hating on South Florida, bro. Really? What? I'm sure the middle of America is just awesome. I don't want to get run into. I don't want to get shot. I don't want to get pulled over for shopping. You know... I don't want none of these things. I think if you Europe. were maybe incognito here, you wouldn't have that many issues. Mm. That dude that got run into and spun at six in the morning, he didn't do nothing wrong. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Anyway, we, I don't want to bring bad up timing. any bad stuff. Yeah. These guys had some shit happen. It's a 50 you know? let's, episode. Let's, Happy let's, time. Let's say some good. Can we, can we do some? Can we, can we get positive for a yeah. second? Yeah. I want to get positive with, like, you know, the, you know, the three R's, who's right, who's reliable, and who you respect. Mm-hmm. Right. So I want to know, in the crypto world, who... You know, what sources that you you view as reliable? All right, these people know what they're doing, right? They're Vitalik. doing it right. I, I and like Vitalik. who you respect. I think Vitalik's smart. I think Vitalik. Ethereum. Yeah, Vitalik's smart. He writes open source software. He's trying to help Ethereum, you know, stop blowing up the environment. Um, he he did sell the top on the day and dump on everybody's head by sending 50 million to Coinbase and convincing a bunch of other people to sell. And he did that last cycle too. So it kind of sucks that he dumps on everybody's head. That, that kind of sucks. But he also supports a charity I like. 
Um, mm-hmm. So the strategies for engineered negligible senescence, S-E-N-S.org, I volunteered mm-hmm. for them back in 2006 before anybody else. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he gave them like maybe 8 million bucks. I gave him, well, raised 27 million for him. So he does, he, and Hex is built on Ethereum. You know, it was nice. It was a good platform. We've had a great time with it. Other than... You guys have a personal relationship? No, nope, never talked to him. Not at all? No. Nope. See, you got to understand that, like, as the founder of a consensus network, it introduces kind of a conflict in that if someone makes a coin on your thing and gets rich on your thing, but you don't own any of the thing, then his thing pumps and your thing doesn't pump. Mm. So Vitalik never big ups ERC-20s on his platform because he doesn't own them. And so he just tries to pretend they're not there. Mm. So he talks good about Ethereum because he owns Ethereum because he wants you to buy Mm. Ethereum because that's the ticker he gets rich on. And so other good things that are on his platform, he doesn't really say good things about. Like Mm. he's never said a good thing about hacks, even though it's amazing, because he does maybe he doesn't own any hacks. And so he'd rather see you buy Ethereum which has less gains, you know, Hex is up versus Ethereum 70 fold. So he'd rather see you buy Ethereum than Hex because he ain't making money if you buy Hex, but he is making money if you buy Ethereum. And so like, you know. You think he's a good person as a person? Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. yeah, I think he's a genius. I think he's a good person. And uh, just, you know, some of the market things he does dump in the tops, so I don't like that much. And he raised our gas costs in a weird way too. Mm. Um, he raised the cost for people that we're reading and writing to disk, and because we're a real thing that has real utility, we read and write to disk. And so it kind of raised our fees and gave everyone else a discount. And you're like, so you screwed us, but you gave everyone else a deal mm-hmm. based on what you stole from us. That wasn't cool. Like, there's a, he's 80% great. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Not everyone can be 100%. Anybody no. else on this list or any other, you know, content creators or websites no. or distributors that you think no. are even, Worthy I like naming? I like Uniswap. Okay. I made I, I made Uniswap popular. I carried it on my back. Hex was the thing that made it popular, pretty much. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, the founder's kind of like a douche, but he made a great product. Who would you? Uh, okay, that's the good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let's go bad. Can we go negative for a second? Who would oh, you say? Things. All right, these people are con artists. Clint, these people are scumbags. Right, Clint, Clint, I've heard you say things about yeah. NFTs. Who's sure. on that list? Mm. Who's on the shit list? Well, Richard? I mean, like NFTs, they're not evil overpaying for them is evil. So like having a serial number loosely related to a JPEG, which may or may not still be hosted on the internet, Mm -hmm. it's not exactly evil. But paying a million dollars for such a thing, that seems very stupid. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, when's the bottom? Well, when those guys get washed out. I want to see Michael Saylor sweat. I want to see more people liquidated. I still think there's some exchanges that are insolvent, but just not, they haven't collapsed publicly yet. You're saying Michael Saylor, you want to see him sweat? I mean, I would like to see him get liquidated, really, but I don't think he took on enough leverage to do that. Like, he took on some leverage. He, he can get hurt pretty good, but, you know, he's probably going to be able to withhold and, and, like, hold a lot of the stuff. You ever still. met Sailor? No. He's got me blocked. Everyone's got me blocked. Uh, blocked? Yeah. Why would he be blocked? Because I get people to sell his shit coin mm. to buy a better coin. Hmm. So if I have my way... His shit coin is Bitcoin, yeah, though, isn't it? Yeah, this noob that said Bitcoin was going to fail in 2013, he tweeted in 2013 that Bitcoin was going to fail like online gaming. And he never deleted it. That. Yeah, he never deleted it. It's still there. Hmm. I had giant bags of Bitcoin in 2013 because I'm smarter than he is. He likes to pay 10,000 times higher than what I paid because hmm. I'm smarter than he is. He's a loser, and he's in, he lost money. Would you ever I, have a debate with Michael Saylor? I'd love to debate him. Mm. And he would not debate you? Set it up. Let's go. All Actually, right, guys. Hold on. You want to see that? Let's see. Can we get a Episode poll? 51? Let's get a poll out there. Who Some would people, win in a debate? I okay? can't lose. I can't lose. That's, I'm <laughs> invincible. Or, do you want to say who would win or would you like to see it? What's a better <clears throat> poll? Uh, who would win? Who, who would win? Yeah. Who would win? Richard Hart, Michael Saylor, right. debate here on Valuetainment. Whatever, sure. Mm. But, but I think someone was up. trying to set it up and he was trying to charge 200K for it or something. That's what I heard. I ain't paying to bait with nobody. Like S A Y, pay me. Like so weird. S A Y L O R. Yeah. Even his name sucks. So even he's, his name he's is on misspelled. your he's on your shit list. Yeah. Anyone he got, else? He's got people to take home loans out. I hear. Mm-hmm. I think I heard him talking about this. Mm. Like context is important, but I heard him say like you know the only good thing you can do is promote Bitcoin and like take on leverage and sell your house and sell your business and buy Bitcoin and you're like good job, dude. You got everyone to buy the top. You got everyone wrecked. Mm-hmm. I did the opposite. You you bought what my boys sold. Congrats, dude. You got wrecked. Mm, my sailor. people's won. Your people lost. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's a noob. He just shows up and is like, oh, he thinks he knows what he's doing. He doesn't well, he know stepped he's doing. down from his company. Was it MicroStrategies he, as the CEO? And now he's, no, he's specifically focusing on Bitcoin, right? I think he got demoted. Oh, really? Yeah. 
They were mm. like, dude, you spent way too much money of our money on Bitcoin. He's wrecked. Why would you? Why would you promote the guy that just got you wrecked? Mm. I mean, well, he's the CEO founder. You can't. You're saying the board had him fucked wrecked. I mean, look, their story is that it was all planned and all this and mm. all that. But I don't like. Okay, cool story, cool narrative, dude. You lost everybody money. It's not me, is it? We got an alarm. It is me. Um, oh shit! I got another interview. Uh, sorry, it's at seven. The um, you're an Androider. Yeah, it's got a pen, and I don't feel like switching. It's got two SIM cards. Mm. An Androider. Mm. It's got two mm. SIM cards and a pen. I don't even know what that I means. Know. Well, it means like you know, you're, <laughs> it can have multiple accounts in it. Uh, so uh. if I'm traveling, right? Like I've got one for internet, one. What for What is pulse. on your phone? What does that mean? Mm-hmm. Pulse. Uh, PLS when it launches. There it it's is. Gonna be sick. But at least Sailor believes in crypto. But when you have sure. someone like Peter Schiff, they're both idiots, just differently. One, one. Peter Schiff is anti crypto, anti Bitcoin, all that, all about gold. Right. Peter Schiff's been calling the top on every bottom since it was a thousand bucks. So it went from a thousand to sixty nine thousand. He cried the whole way. Stupid. I crushed him in a debate too. Mm-hmm. I got him. You to have say, debated Peter Schiff. Yes, I got oh. him to say that gold is a bad investment. He doesn't even consider gold an investment. Literally publicly. Store of value? What he said? And he repeated it multiple times. He said gold is not an investment. Store yes. of value? Is that what he said? No, not even. What he literally said? said you shouldn't buy gold. He's literally what? Like, what? I swear to God. I was like, he started the debate with that. And I was shocked. I was like, why did you? I just prepared to crush gold. Mm. And you literally just laid it on the table and oh, killed yeah. it in front of me. Is the first move in the debate. So now what are we going to talk about? Yeah. What are we going to talk about now? That's the Eminem move. Remember mm-hmm. in Eight Mile? He's like, yeah, I live in a trailer park. Yeah, I'm white trash. And you're yeah. like, oh, I don't even know. I was right. going to call you all that. Yeah. I'm like, damn, <laughs> dude, you just told everyone not to buy gold. And he sells gold for a living. And you're like, this is really weird. I'm going to I'm gonna have to look it, into that. It was that. the anniversary of his dad's like death or whatever. Oh, so. might be de- all right. Ready? I want to play a game real quick. We're going to play a game. Um, and this has to listen, you've materialism, flexing for fun. You've already kind of said um, what you own. You're flashy, you're stunting, you're flossing for sure. Uh, what I always say is, and this is the world has changed. Cars, clothes, jewelry is a lot of people spend their money on that does not appreciate. You have a different perspective. I get it, especially with the things you're buying. You said that you owned. You should buy the dip. Don't buy the stupid shit. Okay. I've been retired 20 years. If you ain't been retired 20 years, don't buy the shit. I agree with you. That's a lot of waste. I'm going to depreciating assets. But yeah. at the same time, you own the world's largest diamond, $4.3 million. You paid for it in crypto. $10 million of watches, you said. You also own the most expensive Rolex. And you have, I don't know, three, four million. The most expensive mil- Rolex ever made. Okay, gotcha. Ever made. Yeah. And then you have, I don't know, how many million dollars worth of supercars? Three, three, three yeah, million dollars. Yeah. Okay. So you're familiar with uh, the game Fuck, Mary Kill? I've heard of it. Fuck, Mary Kill. It sounds like a shitty game. It's a great game. Okay. The people let's in the audience it. will love it. So fuck Mary Kill is like, uh, let's say I gave you three girls to pick. All right, you know, fuck them all. <laughs> no, but that's not how this game works. Let me guess. Some of them are ugly. Then. Okay. You have to pick. You know, fuck Mary Kill. So we're gonna play fuck Mary Kill with cars, clothes, jewelry. So ready. Mm-hmm. with that being said, you have supercars. You have three million dollars mm-hmm. worth of supercars. Mm-hmm. You've got clothing galore. Everything yep. you wear. Everything that you style. ever bought. Everything yep. the style, the swag, mm-hmm. and obviously you got the jewelry. The the drip. Uh, the the Mil- Rolexes, the diamonds. Bulgari, so now yep. we're gonna play fuck, marry, kill. Let's go with Richard Hart. Let's you have it. to marry, fuck, or kill one of those three assets: jewelry, cars, clothes. So is the fucking good? That's good. Good fucking. Yeah, you no, know, you're having yeah. sex. Okay, yeah. so yeah. sure. Uh, yeah, you're having so sex then, with them. One of them you're it. killing, and one of you have for the rest of your life. I mean, I I think that I would keep the watches because they appreciate the best. And so you're marrying the watches. Oh shit! Mm-hmm. Fuck is like you're gonna use. I would it for kill. An hour I would later. kill the clothes, okay. marry the watches, and fuck the, uh, the cars. jewelry. Or the cars. 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 I'd fuck the cars. Okay. So Wait a second. Yes. Go again. Clearly, Richard Hunt has never played fuck Mary kill. Got, this is the first time. <laughs> fuck Mary kill. I usually die cars, this. clothes, yeah. jewelry. Mm-hmm. Kill the clothes. Marry the jewelry, fuck the cars. Marry the jewelry. Yeah. So the, the okay. diamond, the watch. No! Is- God damn it. Richard, God damn it. Mary- okay. You're very smart. Look, you, got, you guys can convert this shit. For the smartest guy I know, you're really struggling <laughs> yeah. to I, fuck something. I like. I kill I, something. Exactly. Marry something. I, I like the clothes the least. Okay. okay. So they're dead. I like, the clothes are dead. We're, yeah. clear, we're clear about that. And then I want the watches the most. And okay. then I want the car second most. Okay, so you're going to marry right. the watches yeah. and the jewelry. Yeah. Because you make, I'm like, fuck I'm gonna, the cars. Yeah. I that's could, fun for a night, for a drive. 
You're going to kill but, the clothes. But, okay, but there's a trick to this, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm being cheap in the brain here. I want to say Jewish, but it's not politically correct. <laughs> As um, a Jew, I'm saying go all right, out, bro. There you go. So I'm honoring you. Okay, so... Good to know that a wealthy guy over here is claiming Judaism. We'll take <laughs> I it. I do. <laughs> I, I'm honoring you, bro. I went to, no, I went to Nova... Nova, Fort school, Lauderdale, yeah. Davey. You, you yeah. grew up a lot of them. Totally. So, so explain your mindset with this. The watches appreciate the most, therefore I can convert them at will into the cars. I use the cars a lot more. I get more flex value to the cars. I get more flex per dollar with the cars. I think dollars are way better investment. If any of you guys want to look cool out there, you're going to look way cooler with a sick car than you are with a sick watch. No one gives a fuck about watches, especially mm. girls. Girls do not give a single fuck about your watch at all. Not Is even that true? little. Oh. Unless you're sitting next to that. <laughs> no one gives a yeah. fuck about your watch except another dude. Yeah, that's true. So I would say I, I like the cars a lot more than the watches, but because the watches appreciate more, I can convert them at will. Mm -hmm. So in reality, it's probably marry the cars. But because I'm being cheap, it's marry the watches. Okay. Mm. Yeah. I have a question for you. So Go like ahead, Natalia. you kind of essentially like in people's eyes, you have it all. <laughs> what would be what would be something that you feel like you are missing or something that you feel like you wish you I have lived in the same place for ever. Like twenty sixteen Richard Hart, twenty twenty two Richard Hart, live streaming from the same place. Mm. I am out of space. I have filled it with luxury goods. I mm -hmm. live in a warehouse now full of expensive crap. And it's like, I need more space. But nothing is worthy of me. Like, mm. there is nothing that I can find that is worthy of my excellence. And therefore... <laughs> what does that mean? I, Bro, if you're so you rumored to be a billionaire, be... can you imagine like what your house should cost in theory? Mm -hmm. It should mm -hmm. be insanity. Like water slides, giraffes, you know, monster trucks, a volcano, a real volcano, yeah. with, you know, lava. Like, why not? Like, it just... And so I have basically I have to build that. But yeah. then because I'm ultra social, I want to be in the center of the city for flex value. And so it's like I'm thinking of building like a Richard Hart museum. Mm -hmm. I think I think I'm I think in Copenhagen I'm go I like Copenhagen I think it's cool. I think I'm gonna build like first level flex the cars, next level nightclub, next level the right girls that seem the coolest get bounced up to that level. Nice. And mm -hmm. this is the the mansion, you know. Mm -hmm. But I have to find a building that has the zoning for these things. somewhere in Europe. I'm, I'm, just, I'm gonna do location. Copenhagen. I'm gonna do Copenhagen. You would do it. Um, and do you want to get married? Mm -hmm. No. I, Ever. I, Kids? I did two eight-year relationships. I'm good. Oh, okay. You're good. I'm good. Kids would be cool. Maybe I see that's the thing, right? If I'm gonna do kids, maybe Elon Musk with it and just be handing them out like mm -hmm. business card. Like, hey, uh, you want a kid before I go? You interested in any children? You know, like I don't know. That's how he's doing it now. He's got like nine kids, I think. Yeah, he's trying to populate the planet of Mars. Yeah, he's Genghis Conning it on like, you know, one hundred X less scale. So no marriage in your future. Uh, no. Fuck no. Nope. Mm. Um, but long-term relationship? relationship? Yeah, yeah. you want to have a serious relationship? If she's down to hook up with other chicks and she's fun, sure. That's like, your baseline. That's right? what my last eight year was like. So mm. we, we did stuff with the chicks. Like. And does that end? work out long-term? All relationships have timers on them. They usually fail at six. You fight to save them until seven when we declare dead. Or if you have really good relationship skills, you get one extra year. But like the same reason they're into you is to create sex. We have sex to create variety. Mm -hmm. And the same stuff that made them into you in the first place, which was variety, is the same thing that will drive you apart later, which is variety. New guy. So we create, we have sex. Usain Bolt's the fastest guy in the world. His parents aren't because sex creates variety. And the same thing that creates variety is new partner. Mm -hmm. And when should you have a new partner? When the old kid can make it on its own. And when is that? Seven years. So boom. You're, when your relationship ends, it's not because you sucks. It's not because she sucks. Mm -hmm. It's because relationships have a frequency by which, you know, if, if, if our children became useful quicker, then we would probably cycle partners faster. That's how people beat the odds. became useful quicker. Yeah, kid, like human children are very useless for a long time. They can't defend <laughs> themselves. Mm -hmm. They can't like yeah. feed themselves. Yeah, they're, it takes a while. They're basically so trash for a while. They're yeah. fun to hang out with. Like, yeah. I met one of my buddies. Uh, I haven't seen him in 15 years. I met one of my buddy's kids. He was really cool. Like, he's You like, want to be the cool uncle? Is Richard my friend now? Aww. Hell yeah, he I'm is. like... Oh, there cute. is something special about yeah. being that's the cool so uncle. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like I'm the cool uncle. He's like like nephews uncle and all Richard my best going? friends got kids. Like, it's great. But I don't want cool. them on my own for right now. Right here. But eventually I want to have kids. Eventually uh, you want to have kids I do. too. I feel you know, my brain thinks I'm 25, mm -hmm. but my scale thinks I'm two people. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's going on. <laughs> that's comedy right there. <laughs> Appreciate that. Thank you. That's a, that was the first uh <laughs> You know, humbleness that we've seen from Richard. That's funny. I'm fat old, dude. So I'd get more sparkly. You're not that old, bro. I get more sparkly as I age. Like. You're not old. That's right. Bro. You're not I'm, old. You're right there on your I'm prime. like dinosaur poop. What What do the women that you've that you've dated say about like if we can if we find these 
hundreds of women that Richard Hart has been with. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Even even like the the good girls that you yeah. were with for a long time, said yeah. eight years. Yeah. What would they say about yeah. you now? I I think I'm the same guy I've always been. Like mm. just fun, you know, like exciting. I like to I twerk, I dance on the pole. We saw the pole, big dan- baby. I dance like Flexible? I just I I am fun. So mm-hmm. I think that's what they would say. Richard's I mean, fun. obviously, the mind blowing orgasms may have left them <laughs> severe mental damage from never having been able to get to that level again. I don't know. Like, we feel I bad take, for I, you, ladies. I, I, I'm good at stuff, and that's another thing I'm good at. Like, mm-hmm. fuck like a demon, bro. Yeah, what's the skill? I sport fuck. Well, there's a lot of different tricks. Like, I could teach you something. You got stamina. You got skills. Blood it's pressure, it. man. It's all about blood pressure. Oh. Blood pressure. What yeah. does that mean? So, like, how does your how does your body know the difference between riding a motorcycle and having sex? Timing, right? Blood pressure. Where is the blood? Why is it there? So, like, when you're making out with somebody, you can pull your lips back, make them crunch their abs to get up to you. It's going to force their blood pressure up. Um, Choking, spanking, smacking, whatever. Like, depends on what the girl's into. Mm -hmm. This stuff all modifies, like, their their mind space. Like, so the girls are into it or super into it. So, like, there's this – if you really blueprint and figure out what the person you're with really wants, what they really like, and – Everyone's totally different. I mean, I hate getting spanked. I hate getting smacked. I don't like none of that stuff. <laughs> but some girls absolutely love it. And yeah. most people are afraid to try it out with them. And so they, ne- they they very rarely get to experience that. And so you have to, if you want to make people happy, you have to learn what makes that person happy by teasing and being playful. And, you know, just, you, they're not going to straight tell you. Like, if you ask, they're not going to tell you. Hey, what's that kink that, you know, you don't tell no one about? I don't <laughs> You'll never get it. You want like I've tried. It's like you gotta you gotta go through the work, you know. But if you want to have put in the work, ladies and gentlemen. If you want to have great experiences, here I can see the comments. Richard Hart's a woman beater. Like yeah, dude. But if your no. chick was with me, she'd beg me for it. So <laughs> the whole thing, rather than just the comments, the whole chat. The um. All right. So in your future, oh. lady, she better be into other women for sure. And she and you're gonna yep. get the kink out of them. Yeah. All right, respect. And look, if you're a plain Jane normal chick wants to do missionary sex solely for the purpose of procreation, I could probably make that work a few times. Mm. We could try that. <laughs> ah! Did you want to look at more Super Chats? Was that what you are asking? Yeah, no, well, Natalia, I'll get to mm-hmm. that. Um, okay. we got about 15 minutes left with the great Richard Hart, the uh, amazing pole dancer, the uh, non-diversification Richard Hart, <laughs> the swagged out. I got lame gains mixed in <laughs> with my good gains. <laughs> I make less now. So get get us your super chats. We're going to be answering your questions, mm-hmm. um, and Natalia is going to take over for here. Let's um, let's get into um, some money advice for the for the regular Joes and Sallies out there who are like, all right, Richard, I get it. Buy the dip. Buy the dip. But is like, that your I, best I, piece I, of advice? So I'm just checking to see if I'm going to miss my next yeah. interview. Um, I uh, my original books. I'm a serial entrepreneur. Um, crypto used to not exist. I was rich and retired before crypto was invented. So my original books are on how to hire, how to dress, how mm-hmm. to market, how to have a unique selling proposition, how to use referrals, you know, how do you find someone that not only can do the job, but will do the job. Like normal bread and butter, badass entrepreneurship is in my books. Crypto's not. So if you go to t.me slash SciVive or go on YouTube and listen to the audiobook S-C-I-V-I-V-E, there ain't no crypto in there. But the thing is, crypto broke all that advice. Crypto mm-hmm. now murders any of those businesses. Oh, you work real hard in your business? You pay 35% of your tax. Congrats. Oh, you work crypto? 20%. What do you want to pay? 35% tax or 20%? Uh, 20 is better. What are you saying? Capital gains versus yeah, ordinary right. income? Yeah, if you work hard in your business, you're paying 35%, period. That's it. There ain't no way around it. Like, I mean, there ain't no way around it. Like, they, they work hard to make that. They make it very hard for you to get out of that. Yeah. Well, the, the they just hired another 87,000 IRS agents, so... So stupid, dude. Goods and services are all that matter. Those IRS agents are not producing goods or services. Mm -hmm. They're harming the people that do. I'm not a fan. Yeah, I understand you on that one. Um, So when you were growing up, someone must have pulled you aside or you must have heard something where someone was like, hey, buddy, you got to remember, blah, 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 blah. What was the best piece of advice that you received? Mm -hmm. So I was told that salespeople made the most money. Mm -hmm. And then like when I used to do air conditioning, I used to fix air conditioners for a living. Mm. And uh, I would go to people's houses, like stockbrokers would make money, doctors, lawyers would make money. You want to be a lawyer? Seven-year school. Take on debt. You want to be a doctor? Seven-year school. Take on debt. Don't make nothing when you get out. Mm-hmm. You're a lawyer. When you graduate, you're like making cold calls trying to do wills for old ladies. You mm-hmm. suck. You can't do anything. They didn't teach you anything useful in school. By the way, you guys that do want to be lawyers, go become a lawyer in Louisiana, 
You can do it without taking school. You can just take the bar exam straight in Louisiana, get your license there without having to go to school, and then export it to other states. So you can become You're a lawyer. The system right now. Uh-oh, yeah, lie. you can become a lawyer without. That's going just to law what we school. need in this country: more lawyers well, who don't know the laws. That's the great yeah. part: is they all go into politics. So double bad, like lobbyists. So bad, <laughs> like just no. Like the majority of the political class in the United States is lawyers. And mm-hmm. So what do they do? They make a lot of verbose bad stuff mostly, and they think they know how to do business, but they don't. I'm a big advocate yeah. of. Um, so learn sales, go into sales, yes. and go into business, or better yet, go into crypto. But if you can't do crypto, business is second best. As far as return on your investment. Yeah. I mean, the second best return that you can get to crypto is startups. So, like, you know, Peter Thiel did pretty good with Facebook. Yeah. Like, startups are the best ROI that you can do next to crypto. It's not easy, though. Mm -hmm. No, it's not. Mm -hmm. You can lose. Most businesses fail. Mm. Like 80%. Yeah. Especially everyone wants to start a restaurant. That's the most likely to fail business. Yes. That's probably like 95%. Or a club. Dude, I grew up in South Beach. I get it. Here's what I'm worried about. When have you ever seen the dude that owns a club hooking up with chicks in the club? You've never seen it, not even once. So I'm going to find out why that is, and it's going to suck. You're saying in the club. You will never see the owner of a club hooking up with chicks in his club. It's never happened. I've never seen it. And why do you say that? Because I've been to thousands of clubs, never seen it happen, neither have any of my friends. There's some mechanic by which people don't do it. Maybe the only people that own clubs are people that suck. Maybe people keep getting bothered, like, oh, can you fix this? Can you fix that? I don't know what the failure mode is, but I have a feeling that when I start my club, I'm not going to get laid there for some reason. It's going to suck. Then I'm going to have to go to my friend's clubs. But we'll see. Like, Really, the, 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 listen, the end game is to not do this you know, in-person crap anyway and just do all Insta, really. Because the hottest chicks are on Insta. You never see them in real life. You'll just never, ever see them in your entire life. The mm-hmm. hot chicks that you see on Insta, you will never see in real life. Never. Not even but once. But are they really the hottest chicks or is it all filters? They're really the hottest chicks. 100 percent yeah yes you meet them and you're like you look exactly like the what i saw nice you know like wow it's nice <laughs> like, to meet you yeah um last couple of things before we get into the super chats i know you got to go by seven a little bit earlier um i'm a big advocate of investing your time not spending your time mm-hmm. okay a biggest mm-hmm. change that i've ever had in my life when i was doing fantasy football and partying and doing all this and playing on just wasting a lot of time spending mm-hmm. time when i should have been investing my time no yep. Uh, ever since I've been started, in, someone told me, invest your time, don't spend your time. I blew time. 10 years on video games, so I looked at you okay. with a fantasy football. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So yeah. I want to get your take on this. I know you're a big advocate of canceling all the nonsense of your life. What do you yep. think are the biggest time wasters out there? News. Yeah. Stop watching the fucking news. Stop. Have you ever modified your behavior based on some shit you've seen in the news? Never. Not once. It's a bad, shitty hobby that makes you feel bad. Stop watching the news. It's terrible. It's useless. It's trash. Politics. No one gives a fuck about your single vote. Unless you're going to go hard and change thousands of other p- people's votes. Mm-hmm. Your fucking vote doesn't matter. It's just, it doesn't. No one gives a shit. You're just <laughs> going to get into arguments and get laid less. Yeah. You're not going to change terrible. anyone's mind for the most terrible. part. Terrible. Absolutely terrible. And what by else? the way, I'm sorry I haven't looked at you much lately. No, it's okay. Oh, yeah. you're I'm not good. trying to be fucking. Look at, look okay. at how good he Adam's looks. Adam's looking like. good, looking so good. you got to, you know. He's looking good. We're both looking good. We're all looking uh, good here. Sorry, He's got the pin. He's got yeah, the fucking yeah. pin. I got a pin. Oh, I don't know what it says. <laughs> I told you the pin is <laughs> it. You know, make like sure you it, come dude. to the she vault. She gave me that pin. Thank you. The pin. Good so story. what else is on that list, by the way? You said video games? Yeah, no fucking video games. No news. And then, like, arguing with people on the internet. Really? Like, yeah. hey, I can't go to sleep. There's someone wrong on the internet. Now, look, <laughs> I spend a lot of time doing this shit. Yeah. But I have side, like, I'm the founder of a thing. I'm mm-hmm. trying to change the world. I got a lot of ways people can interface with me post facto. Like, you can download my books. You can, you know, participate in the movements I'm doing, like supporting free speech or freedom of assembly or, you know, freedom of movement. And so, like, I have an okay excuse. In reality, I probably should stop doing that and just let my money do it for me mm-hmm. and, and buy more ads and, like, you know, hey, look how cool Richard Hart is. Just buy those kind of ads or whatever, whatever they might be. Hey, you know, call your mom. Be a good human being. Eat less, move more, whatever. And, and then just build more stuff. So if I built more and let my money do the marketing, it would mm-hmm. probably outperform the stuff that I'm doing now. Mm-hmm. And, then this, and, like, actually the stuff I'm doing now is interesting enough that if I just chuck money, it it'd probably, like, this is cool stuff. Like, like, rumored billionaire that installs toilets and twerks and calls the top on the day. Bidets. True. Bidet. It's true. It's true. <laughs> yeah. um, let's get to some super chats, and then I've got a couple final questions for our new friend Richard Hart, mm-hmm. and then we'll get him out of here before he has to go to his next interview. Nice. Okay, so we have 
KNTX55. Thank you. Check out Richard's new movie, The Highest of Stakes, and I look forward to mm-hmm. taking with sauce, put it uh, sauce on the channel someday. Uh, Marco the Hexican, this man, RH, is the best man in crypto, period. Thanks him. Thanks to him, I'm retired at age 34, and yo, RH, when we're going to Hex flexing in person, bro. Marco. And then we have PVM Crypto. Richard is 10,000x better than Steve. Satoshi and actually yeah, where's Satoshi? Satoshi? He abandoned his project. Where'd he go? Uh-oh. Did he give his kid his keys? Why know. did he get to keep like a million coins? Like, why is his why is his coins that never moved counted in the circulating supply for market cap? Why are his coins that are not circulating counted for market cap? There's why, some shady things going on in the why world. Why do you right? think? Just to make the number bigger. It's yeah. unfair. That's mm. crap. Like, if the game is circulating and they never circulated, that's a lie. Mm. Like, you know, they're obviously not on. You can't buy them. It's, it's all, crap. All types of conspiracies around yeah. here. It's true. Yeah. He's, a, in my opinion, it's a single guy in the UK around my age, based on his using ISE instead of IZE, double spaces after the periods, timing analysis of when he posted. Because his real time response posts, you can't queue up to beat timing analysis, so you can tell when he was awake. So that's your opinion on who Satoshi is? Yeah. Some mm. guy who, yeah. in his early 40s in the UK. Professor guy, yeah. Mm. That doesn't want to be known. No, doesn't want to be known. Anyone that says they're Satoshi is not Satoshi. Period. So there was a big lawsuit down here in Miami recently. Yeah, that guy's full of shit. Yeah, who is that? Craig. Uh, Craig Wright. Craig Wright. Yeah. Craig Wright ain't not right. Satoshi. He's not, not Satoshi. Satoshi. No. Who were the, who? There was also the guy that died, the handicapped guy. He was. Yeah, the, yeah. Who was that guy? That's. Uh, Hal Finney. Hal Finney. Yeah. That wasn't. He wasn't Satoshi. Nope. nope. And then and neither was David, whatever his name was, that was in Florida here too, like in West Palm or whatever. No, like it's if you're broke and you work a day job, mm-hmm. you are not Satoshi. Okay, if you're doing crowdfunding and crowd raising to try and get money to do stuff, you're not Satoshi. <laughs> yeah. Like if if you don't say or sound like or support the same thing Satoshi did, you're also not Satoshi. Mm-hmm. By the way, why don't you just log into his old accounts? Just log into his GMX account. Mm-hmm. Log into his Bitcoin Talk account. Why don't you spend from his keys? Why don't you do any of the obvious things? What, what, you know, like, do you think we'll ever he, full on find out who Satoshi Nakamoto is? Probably. You think mm. so? Yeah. How do you think that'll come about? That like the, the problem the, is the, the feds like, will figure it out, or he will come to light. I think that there is a small enough number of people on that cryptography mailing list where he first dropped the white paper, mm-hmm. the the cypherpunks mailing list. I, I think that the set of people that knew that that existed was so small that it really restricts the number of humans it could have been to like a sub thousand number. And so someone that wants to really put their time in could like mm. trace down all those paths. And then you're just like, well, what was this guy doing in his free time? You know, but I, I don't. For me, I don't care about those things. Got it. By the, by the way, like yeah. until the grayscale and three percent of all the Bitcoin, uh, they're a trust that you. They have a private placement round. People send the money. They use that money to buy it's Bitcoin. Called grayscale. Yeah. yeah. Okay. They, they own three percent of all yeah. the Bitcoin. Yeah. You can buy their Bitcoin at thirty three percent off now, or thirty oh. percent. Yeah. Why? Because you can't arbitrage it, because you can't redeem the Bitcoin, so that when you buy the shares, you can only buy and sell the shares. You can't take out the Bitcoin to sell the more expensive Bitcoin there to buy the cheaper Bitcoin from them. And so they usually trade at like a 20% premium, but they started that compressed before the Coinbase launch as the whales were exiting. And then now it's the largest deficit it's ever been. And I do not believe in any sustainable bull run until that deficit goes away. Because I don't think Wall Street is going to leave a 50% gain, which is what you get when you buy a third off. You buy something that's 100, but you buy it for a third off, now you paid 66. If you make 33, which is a 50% gain, you're back to 100. So a third drop is the same as 50% gain. I don't think Wall Street leaves a 50% gain sitting on the table, particularly when it's really more than that, if it will trade at its 20% premium as it used to. If ETFs come out, it like reduces their, their position, but they, they really hold the coins. So they factually, provably hold the coins. I don't believe in any bull run until that goes away. Then we have other things coming up, like Mt. Cox is going to let their 140,000 Bitcoin out. The 70,000 Bitcoin that receives from the Bitfinex, Bitfinex hacker might get sold. And then uh, the I'm not sure how many coins Ross Ulbricht has sitting at the U.S. Marshals or the DOJ or whoever is in possession of them. Those are probably going to get sold as well. I'm not sure on those numbers. Those are billions and billions and billions of dollars of sell pressure for Bitcoin mm-hmm. that don't exist for Ethereum. That were confiscated? Yeah. They don't exist for Ethereum. They don't, you know. 
I mean, the Mt. Gox, 140,000 coins. They weren't confiscated, but they are in the possession of the trustee appointed by the government to handle the, the dissolution of the bankruptcy. Hmm. Mm-hmm. So, I, like, I'm not a bull. Like, these bounces are great. Cool, we got bounces. But I think they're going to keep raising rates. I don't think. I think they're going to keep raising rates. I think real estate has to get banged harder. I think the NFT guys have to go to zero harder. There's a lot of coins that need to hit the market, and I think there's still some deleveraging that has to happen with people that are insolvent that need to get liquidated and, and, and dump their bags. And like then we can have a nice solid bottom, do a traditional cyclical 85% dump, 11K and pray. Pray, why? Because, man, if they keep raising rates, you could go 5K. Like You could really have Bitcoin back at You're saying as they raise the rates, Bitcoin yes. will yep. – you know, it's, it's a correlation yep. with Bitcoin. Bitcoin will yep. go down as yes. the rates go up. Why 100%. is that? Well – the amount of money that companies make is related to the amount of money that people have to spend and the amount of financing they can get. And so as, as the value of interest goes up, it's harder for companies to get money because it makes savings accounts and bonds look more attractive because now you get risk-free rewards in bonds and treasuries, whereas you have to take risk in the stock market. And so the stock market is a risk-on asset. Bonds and cash are a risk-off asset. And so Bitcoin is directly correlated with the stock market. Yeah, the stock I've seen market the, goes we've up. done the whole chart. Yep. The stock market is going up, Bitcoin's yep. going up. Yep, and when the stock market goes down, Bitcoin goes down more. When the stock market goes up, Bitcoin goes up more. Do you think that's going to continue to perpetuity? The stock market is correlated yes. with the Bitcoin? Yes, because you buy Bitcoin with dollars. And yeah. so when dollars become more rare, Bitcoin prices go down. Now, as a thought leader, I popularize and discover ideas that other people don't know about. I'm going to share one with you now. If everything goes down at the same time, you didn't actually lose anything. If everything goes up at the same time, you didn't actually make anything. Because what matters is the ratio of what you got to what you want. And so if Rolex went up twice and your portfolio went up twice, you didn't actually make anything. Right. Your, your, your wealth in Rolexes is, is the same. If you're in the market and you have exactly. a Rolex. Exactly. And so what matters is the ratio of what you've got to what you want. And so you know, when everything's charted against the dollar and the dollar keeps going down in value, it makes everything seem like it's going up. But in reality, you're just treading water versus everything else. Mm-hmm. So it's like, it's like, oh, the, the price of my house went up so high. Cool. So did all the other ones around you. Yeah. So if you sell that, you're still only getting one other house somewhere else. Mm-hmm. The only way you can break that is to move into another place, but then you'll never be able to move back. Mm-hmm. Because the place that ran up a lot keeps running up a lot. And so like, if you sold your place in Shanghai or you know, Singapore, y- you can't get back. If you, if you sold your, your house that ran up a lot in a place to go buy a cheap place, you'll never be able to move back ever. Your mm-hmm. whole family's out of that place forever right. because the prices keep running up there. Right. So, like, you know, taxi drivers in the UK are, like, really wealthy. But mm. they can never... Well, it's the same thing that's happened here in South Florida in the last mm. couple of years where it's like, I bought a house for a million. Now it's worth two million. I'm going to sell. Right. It's like, where are you going? Yeah. yeah. You don't know where to go. Texas. Right. <laughs> Texas. Texas. That too. And if you want to get the hell out of Florida, you know, it's it's almost like what you're saying is kind of making, like, as everything kind of correlates well, and goes up together. Well, it's just good to know. It's good, well, it's no, good it's to great. know that your gains aren't really gains. If you're just charting versus the dollar, yeah. your gains aren't really gains. Like, oh, you made you made four percent. First of all, you can't. But if you could, mm-hmm. if you could make four percent in your bank account mm-hmm. in normal interest in a CD or something, you're still at a loss versus what? inflation. Right. Uh. Well, it's almost like uh, bull markets will make you money, but bear markets will make you rich. When you figure out if you buy the dip, mm-hmm. if you buy the dip. Yeah. But here's right. a question. And right now, the dip is still here, bro. The dip is now. Like, dip is now. Bro, Hex is like six or seven cents. It was 60 like eight, nine months ago. Like, mm. Okay. Huh. I'm going to get some Hex. some Hex. Right. Well, me too. Let me get me some Hex. Right. Any more chats before yes, I wrap up our questions? Few chats Keep going. Week. Go fast. We got Street Guru, $10. Thank you. He says, Adam, welcome, sir. This is your chance to get in the Pulse chain. Okay. And then we had Nobody, CZK, $250. Hello, this is David Savoski from Czech Republic. Will you wait for a specific moment to launch a Pulse chain, or will it be launched right after the test? Um, and then we have a uh, real hex bear god. Uh, the real hex bear god needs to know what range will you give us for Snapchat? Very important for those who got hacked. Wills that say the polar bears on ice often weeks uh, away from the internet. RH5. What? I, that all of the last two was just gibberish. Yeah, I don't understand the last really two. Sure. I can read it again. The real hex bear god needs to know what range will you give us for Snapchat? Very important for those who got hacked. Wills. Snapchat. Snapchat. Mm-hmm. I ain't on, I ain't on Snapchat. Nope. I don't know what he's talking about. Sorry, real hex bear god. 
Uh, then we have Internet Money. Yo, Richard from the Internet Money team, the Pulse Chain community. We all so, want to know, are you going to PulseCon 2022? I'm not going to PulseCon. Mm-hmm. I want out of America as soon as possible. <laughs> I'm staying to take delivery of my dad's Tesla, and I'm out. He's out. out. I'm out. I'll tell you, talking to the mic. Uh-huh. Then we have uh, Mahina Tamas, uh, 49 Hex with a rocket ship. Thank you. Then we have uh, Crow Quillis for 369. Thank you. Uh, RH has been right since I started listening to him in 2017. How does he do it? Does he know any gray aliens? Then we have Identity Blog, $3. Thank you. Gavin Anderson gave Satoshi coins to the CIA in 2011. Then we have Bob Lee Guy, 55, hashtag T-Y-R-H. Also, by the way, that other interview is tomorrow, so we're good. Yeah, okay, everyone's cool. asking. Everyone's <laughs> asking about your interview. Yeah. Uh, then we have Oxwell, $5. Richard called the top on Bidget. Bidget? The Bidet. Bidet. And then the bidet. Bidet. <laughs> sorry. Uh, and then that is it for super Thank chats you. at All the right. moment. Okay, last couple of questions for Richard, and then we'll if there's more super chats, we'll I, definitely I, take your. I see you guys are making cash. I looked at your chat yeah, revenue. Yeah, so that's pretty nice. Cash. Let's make some money. Well, thank you for save that money, though. team player. We're gonna. We're gonna um, put it all on. Um, go on to the club. Yeah, um, go to heads. You know how they say that you're. Uh, I, I don't mind that, sir. <laughs> spending at the club. That was not on his list of things to co- to stop. <laughs> News, do politics, not spend money video club. games. What's that? Do not spend money at the club. Don't do it, huh? Don't do it. Don't make it rain. Invest in your future, not her future. I love mm. you. Know, <laughs> you, know what, you know what I can appreciate about you? Being real talk here. As much as like you look at you know the drip and right. what's going on and I'm doing all this and I'm, I'm like the bravado and the machismo and everything, the shoes and the Louis and the Gucci, mm-hmm. the advice that you're giving is very sound. Yeah. You're actually not like judging a book by its cover is probably the wrong approach with you. Right. 100%. Because, you know, you're all about long-term investing, yep. long-term staking, um, not wasting your time, investing in yourself, not spending money at the club, not buying the things that you buy, quite frankly. So there's like, what is it called? Cognitive dissonance to like, mm-hmm. what you don't look at what, you, you know, that, that whole the, thing. The heuristic people use to avoid scammers fails so terribly with me mm-hmm. as an edge case. I'm unique. There's, there's no other animal out there like me. It's weird. Hmm. And if I find a better way to do it, I'll switch. But I haven't found a better way to do yeah. it yet. Well, stay tuned to that. I want to, you know how they say that your network is your net worth? You've heard this before? Eh. Uh-oh. Okay. Well, then, 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 <laughs> then we'll get with this. Well, you know, show me your friends Once and I'll again, show you your future. You, that you, used to you be are true. the combination of the, the used five people you hang out with, you hang out with the most. So who's your crew? Who do you yeah. roll with? I want to know who's in your network. They. The people that bought crypto is rich. The people that didn't buy crypto is broke. The, the crypto broke that. Like it, it used to be that way. Like you know, because it would change your behaviors and give you different opportunities. But now, because of crypto, those opportunities aren't localized to your peer group. They're global now. Mm-hmm. We all see the price chart. We see all see the opportunity. Your your net like basically now maybe they should change that too. Your net worth is who you follow on Twitter, because that's your mm. opportunity now. Like your opportunity now is the knowledge that you're aware of and how much money you've saved up to get in. So it's like crypto broke the that. global network. Social media said. broke that. Um, I mean, the people I hang out with, they don't have anywhere near as much as I do. But who does? I mean, it's like, I, I look, man, with my boys, I want people that are loyal, strong, hot, help me game. You know, let's go meet people. Let's go have fun. Mm-hmm. So the people that I normally hang out with in like day-to-day life are guys that are very attractive to women. Um, and then on the internet, I barely follow anybody. And, you know, I talk to a lot of smart hexagons, hang out with smart hexagons. I'm here because smart hexagons made it happen. You know, I don't have a PR agent. I don't have a building full of people doing stuff. And hex, the community of the people that do everything. That's another reason why we're not a security. I could die. Hex.com could go offline. It doesn't matter. It goes on. Just like Satoshi. He, he dipped. He left. Mm-hmm. It goes on. You know, it did pretty good. 690 million percent when the founder abandoned it. It's not bad. <laughs> so, like, yeah, I guess my peer group. I wouldn't mind hanging out with more smart people, but guess what, man? They can't they can't help me get laid. Like mm. they're just like, oh cool, you're smart, you're rich, great. Is that an area you feel like you like struggle in? Because you're not around sure people. Greed who... and need are co- equivalent. I am greedy. I want more. I don't care how much I get. Like mm-hmm. it's a hole that doesn't fill. Mm. There's a lot of holes that need filling. Hmm. So <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, there's a famous quote by Kanye. He says, I don't know what's better getting paid or getting laid. I know when I focus on one, the other is getting away. Yeah. So how do you divvy up your time and your attention? Because it you've been pretty candid. You want to yeah. repopulate the planet yeah. Elon Musk style. You want to get laid. Mm-hmm. So like, but you're also if, very concerned with obviously hex and making money. So how do you balance your time with that? Luckily, 
the mission that I have to improve the world by fixing finance, politics, mm-hmm. consensus networks, you know, security, getting people to take control of their own keys, which, you know, defunds the scammers, competing against scams for the same eyeballs because mm-hmm. I have, you know, pitches similar to theirs, but we're honest and they're garbage. So me making myself more popular achieves both of those goals at the same time. Mm. So the end game is Instagram. The end game is digital. It is global. And therefore to get, I've thought about this very deeply. You go to high school, there's Mm -hmm. hot chicks. And then they get sucked off into the suburbs by relationships. And then no one ever sees them again. You don't see them at the coffee shop. You don't see them at the club. They no longer exist in society. This also will happen to your guy friends. Once your guy friends like get married to go to suburbs, you're never going to see them again. They're gone. That's it. You might see each other once a year. You're mostly true. Yeah. I barely so see my married friends. Anymore. That's it. Yeah. They're just out. They're no longer a part of society. So what you have to do is if you want to reach these people that are of this severe hotness that don't exist in society, they're there. They're alive. They have a house. They have an electric bill. But they don't go into the public. You've got to reach them digitally. Mm-hmm. And so if you're not on social media or otherwise doing direct messaging to these people, you are not going to have them in your life, and no one you know will either, because they live in a bubble. And the, and the only people that see them are maybe somebody that's at their like tennis club or something. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, they don't exist. I'm gonna break through that bubble. Right? So that's, and this is kind of what promoters do for nightclubs. Like this is kind of, if they're good at their job, kind of what they do, trying to draw people out of their homes into a public space. So. The promotion that I do for crypto and the promotion that I do for myself personally to, to be more attractive, they have a lot of crossover. Um, I, I haven't figured out the outbound thing yet. Like I probably need to just have a team of guys like messaging people that will be cool to hang out with and setting up cool events and then taping it. I think that's the end game pretty much. I don't think there's a way to do it better because I measure these things. Like You can see who's doing well. Like rock stars, they, I don't think they actually do that well. Like The groupies that show up aren't the hottest people. And, you know, maybe groupie interact. I've had, I don't know, people that are Richard Hart maximalist groupies have turned out to be really smart, like nice. You're saying the girls who are like, oh, Richard, people, here's my panties. Yeah, the people that have watched all my videos, pretty smart usually. Cause mm-hmm. I, 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 well, yeah, they're not have to be. dummies to right. follow what you're basically saying. Exactly. Of course. And so then I tend to respect them because they're pretty and smart. And mm-hmm. then what more do you want, you know, and likes you and respects you for who you really are and, mm-hmm. and knows past the flash or whatever. Like mm-hmm. that, that turns around a lot. Like I, I, I like that. So when I you guess, say, when you say, what more do you want? What do you want out of a woman? Mm-hmm. Like if you were to get married, hypothetical, sure. I know mm-hmm. what would well, your you gotta, ideal you wife be? You got to hook up with girls. She's got to be interested. Number one. She can't be jealous. She can't be, she's got to be happy. She's got to be flexible. I argue enough on the internet. I don't need someone to come home and argue with, Mm -hmm. right? Like I did all my arguing, right? So someone's on my team, not trying to check nuts and be smarter than me. It's like, it's not going to happen. Not going to try and check nuts, try more money. It's not going to happen. Like you, you got to know your place. You ain't going to be smarter. You ain't going to have more money. It's not happening. So what do you want them to be better at than you? Mm, Inner game, mind management, state, Mm. happiness. When I'm not in public, I'm not happy. Mm. I'm frustrated. Nothing's going good enough, mm. right? I'm focused when you're on what's out messed in up. Public? Mm. No, when I'm alone. When you're right. alone, I'm frustrated. Nothing's going good enough. Nothing's like everything's messed up in my brain because I'm focused on what's wrong instead of what's right. Mm. And I have tons of stuff I could focus on to be happy, but then I'm not getting things done. So I, when I'm in public, though, when I'm speaking to people, my game's great. I'm a better human being. Mm-hmm. I'm a better human being here now talking to you guys right. than I would be alone. Right. And so when I'm in public. Because you're on, you're like, oh, I got to be exactly. on my game. I got to look exactly. good. I got to look good. Exactly. Yeah. Right. right. Oh, okay. You want people to like you? Well, yeah. you, better be, you better be focused on what's good and positive and mm-hmm. happy and bringing value and having good posture. But and when you're good alone, you're like, oh, I got to fix this. This right. is going on. Exactly. I got to fight with this person. Right. So I'm a better human being when I'm with people. Mm-hmm. And, it, and if she's got that figured out and is just in general, happy, it's going to bring great joy to my life. Mm-hmm. Maybe two hot set of twins yeah. that I are very smart. With, I fucked up with that's the kinda, you know, sisters. It's kind of cool. It's kind of cool. All right. But it's weird. Like, sisters, actually, they're... Yeah, that, that actually is kind of creepy. I just thought about weird. that. It's not as <laughs> creepy. Like, it's like, they're just so different. That's enough for me. Like, they're, they're related, but they're actually really different. Like, in my experience, sisters are wildly different from each other. Yes. Like, totally different. Bodies yes. are different. Faces are different. Even though they got the same parents. They're like, they're almost unrelated. Yes. Like, very yeah. weird. Yep. She's got two sisters. Yep. Yeah. They're yep. like, they, they like different yes. music. They wear different clothes. Yes. They're just totally different. Um. Mm-hmm. Let's go a couple more super chats and we'll wrap up with Last Richard. Last few super chats we have. I see um, we can read this one. This one says, uh, oh, 
Crypto King, uh, 555, Hexicans in the house. What is the 555? The longest stake you can make in Hex is 5,555 oh, right. days. Mm. 5,555 yeah. days. Yeah, it's about 15 years. Got it. And then we have shout out to our veterans and active duty service members. Boom. Mm. And then we have this one that says, tell the body next to you. <laughs> All right, tell the body next to you I need that number. I'm going to explain Hex to her on the first day. There you go. Okay. Okay. Tell you. I got you hey. right next to me, though. You miss 100% <laughs> of the shots you don't take. There you go. <laughs> well played, sir. <laughs> tell the body next the to body. you. The body. Oh, the body. Okay. He's talking to you. No, you. Oh. I'm probably you. I'm, <laughs> I'm just kidding. You. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. You. You. <laughs> yeah. You, Natalia. Okay. Um, and then I say this last one. We have um, five dollars. Hexicans from uh, down under, save you, saving you from yourself. And that was the last uh, super chat. Thank you, guys. We Hexicans. appreciate this, yes. the, the the super chats this for great. sure, Richard. Um, and by the way, if you have not subscribed to Value Tainment or Value sure you... Money. Subscribe, like the video. Yes. Freaking Richard Hart's in the house dropping tons of knowledge. Literally saving tons your of life. Game. Have a little freaking respect so this video goes viral with like. Richard, okay? Yes. Have a little respect for Richard. Um, Richard, my final question. Um, I like the word chilling. Chilling's my, like... Tesla's got a chill mode. I love that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so what I say is that chilling is when you own your time. Mm. This used to be known as retirement. Like when mm. you were retired, when you were yep. 25 years old, yep. I found myself being chilling at age 35. I made my money. I basically, my income, my expenses, everything was good. Out of debt, saved ton, invested, all good. Everything protected, you know, my insurance, everything, estate planning, all good. Chilling, okay? And chilling, there's only a few things you can do with your time, when you own your time, when you're chilling right and i ask people all the time if you were chilling mm. and you had no worries about money money was good you're chilling what would you do with your free time everyone says the exact same few answers they want to travel mm -hmm. they want to work on something they're passionate about they want to give back whether that's philanthropy or donate their time or or you know give back to their community whatever or they want to leave a legacy so Richard Hart. My, my answer ain't nothing like none of that, dude. Of course Ooh, you are. What is it? So I want to know if you're chilling. You are chilling. That's fair yeah. to say. You know, what do you what do you want to do with your free time? You're doing it. But what do you want your legacy to be? Yeah. I mean, I'm a self-help author. I invented the world's best performing asset. I call it top of the day. I raised $27 million for charity. I got people message me say I save their lives all the time. Even people here in the studio mm -hmm. that, that I met were like, yeah, Rich, yeah. you changed my life. You know, I'm like, damn, dude, cool. That's awesome. Well, I didn't know they was like, you know, into yeah. me. Like, I thought it was a normal dude. So I thought it was going to be hard, hard crowd. You know, mm -hmm. I was like, where's the mic? There's no mic here. Mm -hmm. um, I, that cup's full for me. I, mm -hmm. I won't say it's totally full, but like, and, and everything I'm doing works when I'm sleeping. The hexagons are out there killing it. The, mm -hmm. the price performance is killing it. The uptime is killing it. Like everything is awesome. I don't need to do nothing about that. But the girls, I got to do personally. I have to do this personally. I know you guys can be like, oh, man, man, there's more life than girls. Dog. No, there's not, okay? It's a thing. <laughs> he said it. I love that the, you're owning he this. He said yes, it. Yes, like this thing makes me feel the best. Like if I have free time, I'm yeah. going to go to the local club and walk up to people and say hello. Mm. And, you know, eight out of ten, I'm going to be like, fuck off. And then two out of ten, I'd be like, where are you from? Tell me about you. And then that's that. Like, you know. Yeah. So for me, I'm ultra social. I want to be with people. Pretty people are even better. Cool. Mm -hmm. And that's how I want to spend my time is with other people, you know? So like this whole like leave a legacy shit, I did that already. Like mm -hmm. if I died right now, yeah. the legacy's already set. Mm -hmm. Okay. The, the the die has been cast. We won the game already. So I could be dead right now, the legacy is already locked in. And by the way, they made a movie about me. It's complete, it's finished. Mm. And it's really good. It's, the name of the movie. it's called The Highest of Stakes. Hmm. So if you go to thehighestofstakes.com, you can watch it. S T A K E S. Well, they're selling it right now. Hmm. So they're in negotiation with different sales agents. You can't directly approach these large streaming entities. You have to go through a middleman, which is weird. Hmm. Um, it's not like Walmart. You can directly sell to Walmart. You don't have to sell to a Walmart middleman. But with these streaming agencies, you do actually have to get a sales hmm. agent, unfortunate. And then they're just finishing the score. So there's a 30 piece orchestra. Like they raised like a lot of money from Hexagons to like make this thing awesome. It's crowdfunded. Um, and it looks great. Like if you, if, why don't you just play the trailer? Can you just play the trailer? Is that possible? It's like two minutes. Like mm -hmm. the trailer is like, you know, pretty good. Let's see it. I mean, we've like, we did. Is it on YouTube? What do you, you see? Go to a website? Yeah, just type, you know, 
Richard Hart documentary. All right, guys, brace for impact. Yeah, or the highest of stakes. We've got yeah. a two-minute clip with oh. Richard Hart right now. Yeah. The highest of stakes. That'll do it. Oh, make sure. Oh, there it is. This is the opportunity of a lifetime. Yes, every scammer in the world is going to tell you something similar, but in this case, you are actually going to have regret. <laughs> I mean, you're scamming everyone. Richard Hart, he's got a history of being called the spam master. There are some weird things going on with his coins. Making one of the biggest Ponzi schemes that we have ever seen. Hex coin is 1,000% a scam coin. That's that guy we had. I don't like him. So. People I think he ended up buying Hex, by the way. to lose money because of you. I know the guy on the right is Hexican now. We convert haters into Hexicans. Remember all the haters? All the haters, all the haters that told you that I was a scammer and Hex was a scam? I got bad news for the haters. We're making new all-time highs where everything else is getting wrecked. Price is up four or 5,000 fold in 600 days. I've made enough money in the last week that I could buy a house in cash. I would never have to work another day in my life. I'm here to shell. I want to change the world, and I can only do that if people participate. I bought that car. The only nice. thing that matters in this world is goods and services. Everything else is accounting. And our made-up imaginary internet money is better than the government's made-up imaginary internet money. Human luggage. Both of them are only backed by the shared fiction of the humans believing that they have value. If Hex is a religion, then Richard is God. I'm in crypto for glory. I want to have the best cryptocurrency that's ever existed. I want to have the best performing asset that's ever existed. And so I think of blockchain as like the internet. In the 90s, everyone thought the internet was just for email. <laughs> I bought some this morning. They're imaginary quarters. Like, it's like playing Monopoly. I put it all in. I put, I mean, I went. Like, all what? <laughs> all of our house money. I think he went in at 25 or 40 cents. It's currently like six or seven cents. This is a force that is not going to go away. The cryptocurrency is not going away. And at some point, the people that you met that you thought were crazy loon birds, they're gonna be in the 1%, and they're gonna be the people that own half of everything. Wow. I like that. And that's, and like, one. it got, the production value went, we shot all that in like two days in Estonia hmm. in an overcast weather. Since the other scenes, dude, we did we raced cars in Marbella behind a truck with a crane. That was all amazing. Like we I I took my collection of three million cars, beat on them at the track, my thousand horsepower Ferrari. It was like I was like pushing it. Like, did you create like this documentary? Who no. someone approached Hexicans. you about this? Yeah, so this one Hexican, he uh he basically knew these guys that had like five Emmy awards that had won awards for television stuff. And uh, so like the Emmys are the television version of the Grammys. It's like, not the Grammys, the Oscars. So uh, yeah, they they pitched me and I'm like, okay, can I see your stuff? And then they showed me their stuff. I'm like, oh, wow. Okay, you guys are this is very good. Because mm -hmm. most people's stuff sucks. Like most people who message you, their stuff sucks. So we met up with them and then... Uh, yeah, we did. We went to Iceland. We went to uh, Marbella. Like we went to Denmark. We went like we filmed everywhere, mm. and like it, it's a lot of effort actually. Like when you're actually filming things, it's very time consuming. You have a call sheet. You have to be up at this time. Do this. Do this. Do right. this. Do this. Do this. It is very hard. It's like, work. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a job. It's a real job, and we did it. Like we were just in a castle before I heard my mom was in the hospital, which is the only reason I'm back here. Like, oh, yeah, my mom had uh, a, a urinary tract infection that went septic and went into her blood. Mm. And she's like, you know, make sure the will's in order. I'm in the hospital. I'm like, fuck, no. Yeah. Flight, immediate, you know. What can I do to help, right? Mm -hmm. Luckily, the antibiotics fixed it. It didn't get to her kidneys. Good. If it had got to her kidneys, it would be 30, yeah. 40 percent dead in one year. Oh. Yeah, it's really dangerous. If it doesn't dangerous. get to the kidneys, it's 6 or 7 percent. It can be really dangerous, no. yeah. So now I'm getting a new house good, and like, good, you know, yay. making sure she's got doctors and cleaning people and I installed them bidets myself and like just anything I could do to help my mom. Yeah. And now I'm trying to help my dad too. My dad is broke. He ain't got no money. Mm. He's broke as busted as could be. He picked me up from the airport in his work van. The steering wheel's made of duct tape, roof's made of metal tape and rust. Uh, you know, you can smell the fumes in it. The, everything's busted. The, the antenna is a coat hang hanger. He doesn't hanger. want to accept money from you or what? Yeah. But I'm going to mm. fix that. So now I bought he him a Tesla. He doesn't want to accept money from his son. I, I think I've got it sorted now. Mm -hmm. I've, I bought him a Tesla. 
He's cool with it. Oh, that's I think I got him to start. Just to ease yeah. him into it. Yeah, like, you know, as you age and stuff keeps getting worse, right. you, eventually you it's easier for them to take the probably in their, what, early 70s at this point? Well, I was my dad's 25th birthday present. So oh. we had the same birthday, same name, 25 years apart. So mm. I'm 42. He's 25 years older. Um, so he's 67. Yeah, and, like, he's been running to so many times. Mm. Driving here is a war. And, like, you become a worse driver driving here, too. I, I got here, and I was like, man, look at all these people driving like idiots. And now I'm driving exactly no. like that. <laughs> I'm I'm swerving through traffic. Did you drive like, here today? You, yeah, I drove here. Yeah. Okay. Mm. I just about ran out of gas. Too. I'm like, what is going on? Bro, here? you know when, when's the last time I had a car? Tell me. Eleven years ago. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. Dude, Uber everywhere. Yeah. Don't even want to deal with these crazy people. In the wow. Streets stuff. I just That's Uber. Wild. I, I I watch my videos. I do my crazy. work. I just sit in the back of an Uber. Yeah. I'm off to the road. Yeah. Let's I drive with Neil. Could work. Yeah, Neil. Yeah. Could work. Um, well, when's this documentary coming out? Mm-hmm. Before the end of the year. Sick, bro. So they're they're just doing the audio now. Um, you know, because like some of the like when that car in when we're doing that race and mm-hmm. the, that road, you want mm-hmm. the car engine to sound right, and you know the, they're scoring it with a, a custom soundtrack for the whole thing. Mm-hmm. It's gonna be really good. Awesome, it's gonna be interesting. Really good. Richard, where can people find you? Go to richardhart.com, uh, twitter.com slash richardhartwin, instagram.com slash richardhartofficial, and youtube.com slash richardhart. I'll do eight hour long videos where mm-hmm. I answer everybody's questions about everything. I mean. I've done a couple eight-hour-long videos, mm-hmm. and with no bathroom breaks, which is like, how is wow. that even possible? Look at us; we're about two and a half I gotta pee like crazy mm-hmm. right now. I drink this stupid okay. thing. Yeah, mm-hmm. I tell everyone on the internet my cock's the same size as one of these. <laughs> <laughs> my fans keep telling me to stop doing. You know that. It, what? The, and I mean this sincerely. It's it, it's hard to. It's so not, really, it's not the same size. No, it's, okay, well, they I'm make multiple like, cans. It's yeah. the same size as one of the cans. I it's like not your humor. I like the joking. It's <laughs> it's easy these days to judge a book by its cover. Yes. You come in, you're all bling, you know, whatever. I'm the man, and then yeah. it's like, no. If you actually Let listen him. to what I'm saying and you follow the sound advice, sound principles, like you're basically clowning on people who spend all their money on this. Yep. I assume this is a very small fraction of your money that you're spending mm-hmm. to stunt rounding errors. Exactly. So it's you're you're using this as a statement to say, you see what I'm doing? Don't do this. Pretty much. Unless you got what I got going yep. on. If you're not retired twenty yep. years, don't do this. Exactly. So essentially what you're telling young people out there is to save that money. Invest in your own future. <laughs> really. Respect. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's the best message you get. Richard, respect. Pleasure, bro. man. Yes. Thank you so much. I think I'm a fan. Thank you. This yes. has been awesome. It's pleasure. Been Guys, pleasure. check out Richard and uh, the, the website again. The, the highest stake. What is it? The highest of stakes. The highest of stakes. The highest of stakes. Yeah. Dot com that's going to be coming out by the end of the year. Yep, yep. Hex in the house. Thank you to all our hexagons yes. that are here. We appreciate you. Thank you for all the super chats. How, how cool is that? Like this is their doing. That movie is yeah. their doing. It's like, amazing. The hexagons do everything. You really Listen. are making a movement. It's like a movement. It's, it's crazy. Like a whole it really bunch is. Of people. And I mean yeah. this in when a respectful you, way. When you There's a cult up, following yes. going on behind yes. you, bro. Imagine you locked up something for 15 years. You can't sell it. You yeah. can't sell until you serve half your time. You could get out with your principal, lose all your interest. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There's never been anything like that ever before in history. No, there's never been a financial instrument in the history of mankind where you would lock up so many millions for so many years, and it creates a bond in the community. We're one, we're attacked by everybody, we're mm-hmm. gatekeeped by everybody, mm-hmm. everyone lies about us, it's crazy, and that forces us together, and then we can't get out. We're stuck with each other whether we want we out or going not. going nowhere. Yeah, so. Oh, you want to leave? Well, now you just can't leave. Yeah, yeah. And that's Bronx Tale. Yeah, you, yeah, you think you're stuck in here with you think I'm stuck in here with you? You're stuck in here with me. Yeah, it's, it is. Uh, the watchman. <laughs> Respect. Guys, thanks for being a part of this. Like the video, comment, share, subscribe to Valuetainment, and show Richard some love. Richard, we appreciate you being here. Thank you, man. Thank you guys. We'll see you next time. Save that money. Save it.